Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome if you all are new. Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Comb and in today's video I am over the moon excited to share with you 50 DIY Dollar Tree Decor Crafts. This is going to cover so many different styles and ideas of crafting and decorating on a total budget. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join me on this crafting and decorating journey and without further ado go ahead and plug in those glue guns. Get out your glitter and paint and let's get to crafting. On the Williams Sonoma website for $139 and I decided to dupe one using Dollar Tree supplies. So starting out, I just used this green Dollar Tree foam wreath and then I grabbed several different styles of Dollar Tree succulents and I just clipped the little um, large plastic end off and then I kind of arranged them around the wreath to make sure that they were kind of staggered. Mine is going to be a little bit different than theirs. I actually did this after I searched for a succulent wreath. I've always wanted to make one and just curious. I thought, well, I'm going to see how much they go for. And I found that one. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So we did pretty good with this one. So anyway, you're just going to add hot glue to the back of your succulent and then you're going to pop it on to your wreath base form. I will tell you on these longer succulents, I did have to kind of hang on to them to let the glue dry. So you may want to pop on a show and give it just a sec or two to really let that glue dry. As you can see, that larger one kind of wants to pop off, but they stay on there really nicely after the glue dries. And also you could even take and with a crafting tool, pop a little hole in there just to give it a little bit um, more depth since some of the succulents from Dollar Tree are a little bit taller. Now I'm adding these cute little colored succulents and that's another thing Dollar Tree has been putting out is these pretty pastel succulents so you guys can really get creative with it and make this your own. So once I had all of my succulents added I decided to go in with some of this the Dollar Tree moss. Now you could use green moss, but I just decided to use the brown moss because the brown moss kind of like really holds together. And I also wanted to give my succulents kind of something to offset. So the succulents would be the star of the show and the brown moss would kind of be in the background. And so just using hot glue, I attached the brown moss in and around the outside of my wreath and then in and around the inside of my wreath. Be careful not to burn yourself because when you glue the moss on, that moss is kind of exposed a little bit. But here is how it turned out. I believe, let's see, I probably spent about 10 to $15 on succulents and then the wreath base and then the little moss. So I think for about $15, we did really amazing compared to the $139 cost. And you guys could even take some smaller succulents and pop those in there. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanted to share with you all how I'm going to use these little wooden um, block insert drawers. So these were from another Dollar Tree DIY that we did, and I saved those little wooden drawers. So I'm just gonna hot glue four of them together and create a really neat little planter box. This is going to be, I wanna make it look a little bit more kind of boho chic, I guess. And so I'm just gonna hot glue them all together end to end and then face the little um, cutouts on the inside, that way you can't see them. And then taking one of these Dollar Tree placemats that looks to me like it could have like a faux tile look. And I'm just going to cut out the um, round part of the tile and I did measure it to make sure it was the size of my little box. And I ended up using two of these, but you guys could really get creative and cut out more shapes and just make it look super cool. This is just kind of an idea. Um, and so I'm taking my Waverly Antique Wax and this little sponge brush from Dollar Tree and I'm just sponge brushing the entire creation here and then with some hot glue I just added the cute little faux tiles to the front and honestly I was super excited with this I really wanted to do something that looked a little bit more high-end you know and here's another little hack for you if these if you have these little smaller wood boxes the Dollar Tree foam dice fit perfectly down into your box and you can just take a little crafting tool because they're really snug and bug rug and you can just pop your greenery in that way so Dollar Tree is carrying some amazing green greenery you guys are going to have to check it out but I'm just trimming off the greenery and then with the little um, holes that I poked using my crafting tool I'm very easily no glue required popping these in here you could even 
add in some extra glue. I kind of even shook it around to make sure that they were gonna stay, but you could even hot glue the ends of your stems if you wanted to, to really make them secure. Like maybe you're putting this out on your patio. I'm gonna use it on my dining room table, but if you were putting it out like on your patio, you may want to add some dabs of hot glue, but I'm telling you these little foam dice are a great hack for floral foam. And so here is what it looks like with just two bundles of greenery. I decided to fill it out even more and add one more bundle of greenery just so it looks nice and full. And then I use a, a little bit of moss in and around um, where the foam blocks are because we don't want to see them, of course. And that also gives it like a really natural kind of earthy appearance. And it looks so fabulous popped in to my little table centerpiece. I put it on top of a couple of vintage books um, just to give it some dimension and this feeling like we're kicking back with our summer table. We can grab a book, a cold drink, and just enjoy. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna create a super adorable three-tiered tray. And I'm starting out with one of these Dollar Tree candlesticks. I'm using E6000 glue for the um, permanent hold and then a little bit of hot glue for the temporary hold. And I'm gonna pop that on to this pretty set of Dollar Tree aqua dishes. So if you guys pop into your local Dollar Tree, you're gonna see um, really beautiful, colorful dishes. And if you don't want to like change out all of your dishware, this is a really fun way to add a pop of color to your table centerpiece or your coffee bar. And so I'm repeating the same steps with all of the candlesticks, just adding some E6000 glue and hot glue. And here's a little note, you all don't have to use the hot glue part if you're gonna have time to let these set up. So I've shared with you guys how to create um, different things like this. And if you just take the E6000 glue and do it step by step and let the E6000 glue dry for about an hour or so and then add your next layer, you won't have to use the hot glue. The hot glue can kind of make it sometimes a little bit goopy where it doesn't hold as well as it should. So honestly, I would just suggest using all E6000 glue, but for video purposes, I am using some hot glue so I could share with you guys how it all comes together like in a decoration fashion. And so here it is with some faux lemons, limes, and oranges. Now these are so fabulous if you love to pop, you know, faux fruit into your decor, which I do. They were on Amazon. I'll link some in my Amazon store. And it did say that they weren't gonna come until May, but they came actually super quickly. So I thought they looked really fresh and fabulous and we're going to do some more DIYs that these are going to be featured in so I just thought that they were a nice beautiful pop of color and of course you guys could use real lemons and limes or whatever you want to display on your pretty little tray. This next Dollar Tree DIY is such a fun one. You're just gonna take some greenery and I took a piece of lamb's ear and then some of this Walmart lavender and using some zip ties, I just zip tied them together and then I used some smaller pieces of lavender left over from another project and I'm going to zip tie them on to the top. So you can use like a piece of garland. I just used the end of a lamb's ear garland but any greenery back behind this would work. I wanted this to have like a French farmhouse chic effect. You know, when you look at magazines and they're sharing a lot of French decor or farmhouse decor, you'll see hanging bundles of lavender during the spring and summertime. Now I'm going to make a really cute little easy bow using my easy bow maker. You guys can grab these at the craft store or on Amazon or Deco Exchange, or you can just make a quick little bow by hand. I have a great little Olivia bow video I'll link down below for you. So for this bow, I am doing a little bit smaller. It's gonna be five inches across if you do have an easy bow maker. And I do love the easy bow maker because it saves my fingers after long stretches of crafting. Sometimes I just get lazy, honestly, and use it. But you guys can see, all you have to do is pop your ribbon in and it holds it 
right there in the center for you. And then you have two beautiful little tails. Now listen, don't forget to dovetail those ends. Using some scissors, just pinch this and cut a little triangle in an upwards direction. And if you guys can tell, I still have not found my craft scissors. I'm still using kid scissors. I'm gonna have to make a point this weekend <laughs> to order some new crafting scissors. Okay, so now I'm just going to fluff out my bow, and really that's the secret to your bow. You've got to give it a good little fluffing. I like to fluff it after I get done making it, and then once I get onto my project. And I have been loving using zip ties for the center of my bow. It's got a really great hold. You do want to, though, use something to cover up the center of it, unless you're really going to give your bow a nice fluffing and you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm just going to pop it onto the top of my little hanging lavender bundle, and this is probably the easiest floral that I have done all season. So you guys can totally do this, especially if you're a newbie arranging florals, or maybe you just don't want to do any big floral arrangements, but you do want a pop of color and a hint of springtime French farmhouse lavender somewhere. Now I'm using this little Dollar Tree smaller ribbon, and I'm just going to um, cover up my zip tie by winding it around the top of this. And then you can use that same ribbon to make like a little hook that your um, pretty lavender can hang from. I have this cute little shelf in my dining room. And I was looking at it and I didn't have anything hanging on the little hooks. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be cute to do like a little French farmhouse chic look? I have some vintage dishes that I picked up. Now, here's another fun idea. I don't think that these normally would be a hanging like arrangement bundle, but we're going to use some of this Dollar Tree longer white blooming flower some Dollar Tree greenery, and then just some of these bits and bobs of lavender that I had left over. Again, just kind of creating that fresh um, farmhouse appearance. And like it's just been freshly picked from my garden, even though it's faux, but hey, there will be no mess or fallout from these. So again, I zip tied everything together and then just using this cute little piece of ribbon, I'm gonna tie off the end and then also create a little hook for it. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to create a really super easy little high-end kind of Pottery Barn inspired raised bowl. So I'm taking this little um, Dollar Tree trinket box, I flipped it over and then using some hot glue and one of those succulent garden um, plastic planters, I'm just going to hot glue the planter to the top of this little uh, flipped over trinket jar. And once you have it on there, it stays really well and you can choose whatever spray paint you love. Pottery Barn has really been featuring a lot of like the faux pottery look or concrete look. And so I did have this um, satin spray paint in my stash. It's Rust-Oleum 2X and it's a really pretty beige. It's not like all the way beige, but it's kind of a light beige. Anyway, I just took it outside and gave it a nice coating of spray paint and I did it on flipped over. Now, I did this because in case I wanted to put some wrapped candies or something inside of it or anything inside of it that shouldn't have spray paint touching it, I wanted to make sure that I was able to do that. Now I'm just going to do another one to match it, but do it a little bit taller by using this Dollar Tree candlestick. And again, just hot gluing the little succulent container to the top of the candlestick. And then this time I decided to use some black paint on this one, although I was running low on my black paint, but I gave it a good spray color. And you guys can really do these in any color. It doesn't have to be the neutral muted colors that Pottery Barn is showing. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how to create kind of a more high-end look on a budget and then once those had dried for about an hour I just popped in some seashells and these little faux candlesticks that I want to share with you guys how to make using Dollar Tree supplies and some candles and there we have like a really beautiful kind of spring summer beachy table centerpiece and I think these would be lovely in an entryway table or even on a coffee table if you don't have small children or pets I put this on my dining room table I thought it was so fun and fabulous and really the sky is the limit on what you want to display in your beautiful little pedestal bowls um, so just get creative with it have fun and go for it
Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanted to share with you all how to create those really cute little kind of high-end looking candles. And again, these are a Pottery Barn dupe. I'm just gonna take two of the little Dollar Tree insert drawers and they come in those little wooden boxes. And I had used the wooden boxes for a different craft, but now I'm gonna use the drawer part. So I just hot glued them end to end and I left the little cutout on the top. And I'm gonna use one of those little Dollar Tree party glasses to pop into it. So I'm just using this Waverly Antique Wax to give it a nice good little coating here to kind of give it that kind of wood effect, but that really, you know, pretty high end wood effect. Now I'm gonna take and I'm going to paint my little plastic party cups with some black spray paint. I painted them on one side, but not on the inside. And then I did have to pop out some more of the cutout. And then just using some hot glue, I popped my little party glass into here and that created like a little bowl to put my candle in. You could also pop like some little faux succulents into these, but here they are. And then I just used some little Dollar Tree rocks, but again, really get creative with it and customize this to match whatever decor that you love and whatever decor that you're decorating your home with. And then once I had those popped in, I just added in some cute little votives and you guys could use real votives or fake votives. Um, depending and then you guys have this little fabulous candlestick holder that looks really high end but it's on a total budget so now the other thing is is the little part of the cutout is still facing the other direction so you want to stain the inside of your box or you could even pop some little seashells or goodies inside of that so here it is popped in to my little dining room table and it's so fun fabulous on a budget Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, this is so fun and easy. You're just gonna take some Dollar Tree coasters and whatever color of either um, placemats or scrapbook paper you love and customize them to suit your fancy. So I'm just using the rest of the other plastic placemat that I had used on the other project. I want this all to be cohesive and match. So I'm just cutting them out the size of my little coaster and then I'm simply going to hot glue them to my coaster. And these are more for decorative purposes. Of course, if you were gonna be using um, drinks that you really wanted to have absorption with, you may want to use just the coaster as is, but I wanted them to look a little bit more high end and just a little bit um, you know, more decorative mixed in with my decor. So I'm gonna use them as a centerpiece on my little table setting and then also probably pop them outside on my patio for some cute little coasters. And voila, here is how they turned out. 
I think they're really beautiful. And again, they go in with a little centerpiece and these little pretty little aquamarine glasses that Dollar Tree is selling. Oh my goodness, I think they're so pretty and high end. And it just gives that nice little subtle pop of color very balanced and budget friendly and also a little bit boutique gorgeous. Now this next Dollar Tree DIY is so easy. You're just going to grab a Dollar Tree candlestick and one of their like little small fishbowl looking glasses and using some E6000 glue or hot glue or both, whatever floats your boat, you're going to add the little bowls to the top of your candlesticks. And honestly, I just suggest using E6000 glue if you have time to let it dry. Now for video purposes, I needed something on here that would dry fairly quickly. And so I kind of combined both of them, but I do find that just the E6000 glue glass to glass really does work the best. So anyway, you're just gonna pop those onto the top of your little candlesticks, and then you guys can get totally creative on how you want to use these. You could pop them into your bathroom, put some cotton balls, um, some whatever you want to that you need maybe on your beauty space. Now I decided to use these on my table so I'm just going to pop some of the little Dollar Tree stones and marbles. I love this aquamarine color. I think it's so beautiful and subtle and elegant for summer and I'm going to make these into like little succulent planters. It's going to kind of go along with my little succulent wreath that I created earlier in this DIY video and then here is how they look just with the stones i think they're really pretty but then you can go one extra step and pop some succulents in and just make them look so beautiful and i feel like they look really high end you could even paint the bases of the candlestick if you wanted here is how they turned out Okay, so as always, I ask you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating. Now, later on today, I'm going to be announcing the winner of my $100 Hobby Lobby gift card giveaway. So all you guys have to do to enter is answer my secret question. And my secret question is, what is your favorite summertime plant? So drop a comment down below, leave an emoji. I love to hear what you guys love for summer. I'm going to be doing some gardening, hopefully now that all the frogs has passed. I am so excited to share this DIY with y'all. We are gonna create a super adorable, easy summertime wreath. So I'm starting out with this grapevine base that I grabbed from a Walmart. And then using some greenery, I'm just going to add some greenery picks to the base and then along the top. So just a little tip when you guys create wreaths, it's really great to kind of just start with some greenery first and then add in flowers and bows. So again, I'm just cascading my greenery um, up the side of the wreath and then some down the side. And I am using some dabs of hot glue as well. Now I'm taking this Dollar Tree lemon branch that I created and to create a lemon branch you'll just grab some Dollar Tree lemons and then one of their cotton stems and then just hot glue them to the cotton stem and then I added one of the little Dollar Tree foliage garland around that and that created this really pretty little lemon branch stem and so I had two of those and I'm actually going to just zip tie these in one spot kind of the center heaviest spot of them and then that's going to add my lemons on. Now I do have an Amazon store that I'll link 
lemons in as well if you can't find them at Dollar Tree. I know it can be kind of hit or miss. Also, I know Walmart carries them. I've heard that that's a really great deal as well. The next thing I want to do is create a super little easy, easy bow. I had this black and white ribbon in my stash. I believe I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. And so I'm just going to use the easy bow maker. You guys could always make an Olivia bow. And again, I'll link my bow video for you down below. But just use the easy bow maker if you're using it. This is a six inch bow. I love the easy bow maker. It just goes side to side. You have this cute little bow. Um, you push your ribbon side to side and then your bow is made. So it's really seriously <laughs> super easy and you guys can pick those up at Michael's or um, I believe Deco Exchange sells them as well I think they're like 13 bucks okay now I'm taking a zip tie again and I'm going to zip tie my little easy bow to my wreath I've really been loving zip ties lately I think they work better honestly in my opinion than pipe cleaners um, and I've just honestly run out of pipe cleaners so I switched to zip ties but they have a really sturdy hold and you guys can easily cover up the little zip tie part with a piece of greenery. Now I'm using some of the little Dollar Tree lilacs and I'm using the white to kind of give some dimension to my wreath. Again, I did just clip them off of the stem and then I'm popping them in using a little dibble dabble of hot glue. And then voila, you guys have a super adorable, easy wreath on a total budget. So ready for some spring summer fun. This is going into my kitchen and I actually found this gold frame from um, the flea market, I believe. Actually, my husband brought it home for me. And um, so I'm just gonna pop that in. The frame is going to surround it. So that's kind of a fun idea to you guys can use is to frame your wreath out. And then here it is popped into my little Hoosier cabinet. It's an old Hoosier cabinet I picked up at a garage sale years and years ago. It's always been like a center staple piece in my kitchen. So fun to decorate with. And I can't wait to share with you all the rest of these DIY projects. So I was on the Pottery Barn website and I found these baskets for $100 plus and I decided to recreate my own using some Dollar Tree and inexpensive supplies. So from the hardware store, I grabbed several bundles of rope and it was $4.96 for this rope. I got it from Harbor Freight, but I believe Lowe's and Home Depot also has rope as well. And I got this idea from you guys. You informed me that rope was so much cheaper at the hardware store. So thank you for that. Now I'm taking this Dollar Tree laundry basket and I'm starting out by hot gluing the base of it with the rope and just beginning to wind it around. And as you get to the parts where there's spaces in between the basket, you just kind of hot glue more on top of the rope and then on the little slats that you're hot gluing on top of. I also suggest trying out um, the smaller basket from Dollar Tree that's like an organizing basket that has little handles that will work as well. And it may be a little bit less intensive with the amount of rope that you may need. The laundry basket was fairly large, which I knew going into this, but I wanted something to hold my throw pillows. I have such a thing for throw pillows. So just continue to hot glue your rope in and around the basket as you move your way upwards towards the top of the basket pop some fun music on or a show because this is a little bit tedious with all of the gluing and also make sure you have plenty of glue sticks before starting this project. I'm also using these little Dollar Tree clips. They come in the crafter square section and there's like six dollars to a bundle and they're super awesome for rope projects or pretty much any little Dollar Tree project. So here is how it's looking so far after I got about halfway through the basket. Again just continuing to glue and glue and glue some more. <laughs> Once I got to the top part of my basket, I just used my wire cutters and quickly cut the top of the basket off. You could also use scissors as well. Now I'm just taking this last piece of rope as I get to the end of the rope and hot gluing it kind of to the lip part of the basket and using the clips to kind of hold it on. And so as the glue dried, I just moved the clips down and it came out really, really, really pretty. And I'm gonna have to share with you guys what I did next 
next, which is also really exciting. So I used two rolls of rope for this. I believe there was about 150 foot on the rope and it was about $4.96 per um, grouping of bundles. So I had about $10, $15 in the basket plus a dollar from buying the little basket. The next thing I did was I decided to braid some handles for my loopy handles. So I'm taking some rope and I just hot glued the end of the rope and then zip tied the end together so the hot glue will stick, which kind of worked. And then I'm just braiding it like you would braid your hair until I get the length of the basket. And you can see that I tried out one um, side of doing this before I shared it with you guys. And it worked pretty well to use zip ties to hold the handles on while the glue dried. You can also take and unfurl the rope to where you get a smaller piece of rope, and that works as well. It was a little bit tricky though, getting these handles on as you guys can see, but I just took like a little section of a smaller bit of the rope and then tied them on. Now, I really think I like um, hot gluing and zip tying a little bit better because it got the rope handles on a little bit easier than that. And here's how I did that. I just pulled some of the rope apart and then poked it down to just kind of tie on the side of the basket. I have a whole new respect for people that do basket weaving at this point. Now, how adorable did this basket turn out? My daughter popped out to my studio and she was like, wow, mom, that looks like something that you would see at Pier 1. So I know she was probably trying to be really nice, but it was really sweet and it made my heart feel so good. I was pretty pleased with it as well. For this next DIY, you're gonna need some Dollar Tree nautical rope. And I believe I used about five bundles in one of the little Dollar Tree planters. Now you can choose any planter. So the bigger planter, you'll need more nautical rope and a smaller planter, planter, you'll need a smaller amount of rope. But you're gonna start out by hot gluing the rope to the base of your planter and then just begin to wind it around your planter. And what we're creating here is a little faux beehive. I have always admired these and thought they were so adorable and for whatever reason, I've never created one. I think I've even had you guys request that I create one, so I'm finally getting around to it. Um, so this is really, really, actually really easy. Um, you just need several bundles of nautical rope. Again, I believe I used five, and I did cut off the little tip um, of the nautical rope and then just kind of pressed it in. And then once I got done um, with one loop or strand of nautical rope, I would just add a new one right where the other one had left off. So it's fairly easy um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can also decorate these, which I've seen come out really, really cute. I wanted mine to be actually though, just a little bit simpler. Um, and then once you get towards the top, you just continue to run that nautical rope. And then once you get towards the center part of the top, you'll just kind of get a, a little swirly bird. So you'll just kind of swirl it to where it just kind of creates like a little loop in the center and then you can use a black felt or you can use paint I ended up using paint for the little beehive um, door or little entrance for your little bumblebee to enter into um, and I actually only have a couple of little bumblebee pillows and then a DIY book that I created so I don't have a lot of bumblebee stuff but you guys let me know if you have some advice on where some cute bumblebees might be so now I'm just taking and I'm adding in my little bumblebee door with some black paint so this seemed to be really easy and not a big deal not a hard thing to do at all I think this is something you could do um, pretty much with any age as long as you're supervising with the glue gun and again you can get so creative with it by adding a bow and some cute doodly duds to the top of it Now using some hot glue and a smaller piece of nautical rope, I just added the little bumblebee door and then there you have that. And I decided that I wanted my beehive to be a little bit more hivey at the top, which I'm not sure that that makes sense, but I'm just using some hot glue and I'm adding one more strand of the nautical rope. And you can see Benji Bear down there. He was crafting as well and he's so good at getting into everything while I'm crafting. Oh my goodness, he's like a little kid, but anyway, it's so fun having him around. Okay. 
so I'm just continuing to swirl all the way up to the top and then I even created like a little um, handle at the top of it just by gluing that into the center part and then there you have that a fabulous little bumblebee hive on a total budget I thought this was so fun and easy and adorable and I'm not sure why I haven't ever tried any bumblebee stuff recently but now I think I'm going to and I really need to find a cute little bumblebee to add to my hive so you guys are definitely gonna have to let me know where those might be maybe I'll check out Hobby Lobby I did notice when I was in last time that they did have some fun bumblebee goodies <music> next DIY. I'm so excited to share with you how to create a super easy little Dollar Tree tray. So you're going to grab from the party section one of the Dollar Tree plastic trays and then I'm just using this farmer's market calendar that I found last season and I'm cutting out the fresh lemonade and I will tell you guys can go on to Google and type in farm fresh lemonade or fresh squeezed lemonade and find some great printables if you don't happen to have this calendar so don't panic. And now I'm just taking some Mod Podge and my little brush and I'm giving it a nice healthy dose of Mod Podge here um, to Mod Podge my little lemonade sign on to make my tray. So I was so excited to try this out. I completely forgot about my farmer's market calendar and that there's probably some fun summer goodies because I think it came out in the fall. I remember one of the first DIYs I did with it in the fall. So anyway, now I'm also taking some chalk paint and I did just chalk paint about two layers around my little fresh squeezed lemonade sign. Let that dry and then the next morning I just added a little bit of black paint around the edges with my brush to give it kind of that enamel wear look that I've been sharing with you guys it looks kind of like really farmhouse chic so again get creative with it you guys can use really any color that you're decorating your kitchen with and especially if you're using lemons and if you do have the um, fresh market calendar there's um different ones to choose from with um, apples and all different kinds of things. So really you guys could create any tray um, but because I am decorating with some lemons in my kitchen, I just thought the fresh squeezed lemonade um, would be perfect. So anyway, I hope you guys are loving it and are just excited to make a cute little tray for yourself. Now here is how it turned out and I just popped it into my little hutch with all of my kitchen decor goodies. Now it's time to decorate a super adorable summer lantern. So this lantern I grabbed at Dollar General and I'm just going to hot glue gently a piece of foam to the bottom and then using these little Dollar Tree greenery picks, which I absolutely love. If you pop into your Dollar Tree, you have to check out their new greenery. I just clipped apart one stem of the greenery and then popped them in all the different sides of the little lantern. And then I'm adding in some Dollar Tree um, green moss just to kind of fill it out and make it really nice and springy summery. Now I'm adding in some more of the Stellar Tree foliage, but really you guys could use any foliage that you have on hand. The next thing I really thought would be super adorable was to pop in some of these Dollar Tree lemons. Now for my lemons, and also these limes are now available at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited to find them. All you have to do is pop off the end of the lime or lemon, add a dab of hot glue, and then push in one of your little floral stems that you have left over from a floral. You could also use like a little kebab stick, but the floral stems work absolutely perfectly. And so I decided to pop some lemons and limes into this and how adorable does this look so far I feel like it's so fun and springy summery fresh this is going to be popped in either on my dining room table or in my kitchen um, just for a little splash of summer zest greenery um, and a little bit of a lemon lime zest as well I've really been crushing on citruses lately 
And so then I'm just continuing to add a little bit more greenery and then you can use a flickering flameless candle to pop into the center of that. I added some moss also over that. Dollar Tree sells Spanish moss and also the green moss in their crafting section. And then the flickering flameless candles, you guys can get these anywhere. I love to grab mine off of Amazon. Right now they're $13 and then I have, I think they have like a couple dollar off coupon. I made a quick little loopy Olivia bow, just two loops on each side. Check my bow video down below if you need help making bows. And then I'm just going to tie it on with this cute little lemon ribbon that they have available from Dollar Tree. Give it a nice healthy fluffing. Oh, and the black and white striped ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. So, but Dollar Tree has ribbon or really any ribbon you have in your craft stash. I'm just using what I already have in my stash. So here it is popped into my cute little kitchen cabinet area. I thought it looked super adorable. Oh, so fun and fabulous for just on a budget little project and making a happy little lantern. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm so excited to share with you how you can take two of the Dollar Tree longer signs and I'm using the love signs left over from Valentine's Day, but you guys could use any of their longer signs or if you just have a long board on hand, we're gonna make a super adorable little farmhouse chic sign. But I'm taking two of these signs and I'm just going to chalk paint them with some chalk paint. And I will tell you that I do prefer the Waverly white chalk paint. I had the Kilns brand on hand, so that's what I'm using. The next thing I did was flip this over and then I'm just hot gluing popsicle sticks to the back to get my sign to stay on there nice and sturdy and then you'll have a nicer larger sign that you can make a larger like you know Hobby Lobby inspired little um, sign with so now I'm taking this our farmhouse little um, flag and this is a garden flag that you'll find in the Dollar Tree garden section and they're kind of rolled up but I'm gonna tell you these come out amazing when you add them to signs. They're so easy to Mod Podge. The Mod Podge fits really flat on there and you don't have any bubbles, which is incredible, which I love. So I'm just gonna trim off all the little edges of the sign and I did remove the plastic topper that normally would come um, on the garden flag sign. And then it fit fairly well on the two Dollar Tree signs that I glued together. So now I'm gonna use a generous layer of Mod Podge and this is just Mod Podge that I grabbed from Walmart. Dollar Tree also carries this Mod Podge as well. So this is just so easy. It's such a fun way to make a sign. I've also made a sign similar to this using um, the lemon uh, flag from Dollar Tree and they have a really cute gnome flag out as well. I kind of have a little thing for their flags and their signs, but I thought this little our farmhouse sign would just be perfect for my kitchen. I have little roosters in there. So it's kind of like a French country farmhouse chic vibe going on. So I just thought this would be so cute. So again, I added a layer of Mod Podge and then I did take some Mod Podge and run that over the entire thing to seal it off and also give it like a little bit of sheen. This is the glossy Mod Podge. They actually make glossy and matte and they also make a waterproof Mod Podge if you guys didn't know that. So anyway, now I'm just taking this lamb's ear. You can grab a lamb's ear at Walmart for $2 a bundle and I'm hot gluing it kind of end to end to the top of this. And then I'm just taking this ribbon and making a little loopy bow here. So you just take the ribbon, loop it over on itself. I wanted to make the bow somewhat small. Actually, you guys know I love big bows, but for this one, I didn't want it to overtake our sign. So here's a little hack for you. You can take a longer piece of ribbon that you have left over tie it onto the center of your bow and voila, you have a fabulous little bow, totally easy. And then you also have tails. So just give it a bit of fluffing. Again, I did get this ribbon at Hobby Lobby and then you can hot glue that to the center part of your little sign. And this was so fun and easy to make. And I feel like it came out really super adorable for such a total budget project. And then don't forget to dovetail your ends. So by dovetailing, I mean cut a little triangle in an upwards direction to finish off your ribbon. Give it a nice boutique finish. You could also do like a little side cut as well. You just don't want your ends to be all floppy after you've spent so much time on your little beautiful project here. 
I did end up also adding some greenery to the base of this again just using some of that lamb's ear but you guys could use any greenery that you love I thought since it was a farmhouse sign I thought that the lamb's ear would look super adorable and so I just hot glued that to the base and voila I have a fabulous little farmhouse sign on a total budget and I didn't have to use my Cricut although I do love my little Cricut joy um, but look how cute this turned out it goes perfectly in with my little kitchen hutch decor and just so fun and fabulous on a total budget. Now this next Dollar Tree DIY is super easy and let me tell you, I feel like the results are fabulous. So you're gonna grab one of the Dollar Tree tote bags and I found the Good Vibes Only and You're a Peach. When I saw them, I knew instantly I wanted to make throw pillows out of them. You guys know I love to make throw pillows out of pretty much everything under the sun, placemats, tea towels, and tote bags. So just take one of the Dollar Tree tote bags and remove the handles from it. And these are kind of like a little bit of like a cotton canvas or cotton material so they just went perfectly and they already have that little tote bag lip on the top so you're just going to take and after you stuff it with some stuffing I just use pillow stuffing from a pillow that had seen better days that I wasn't using and so I'm repurposing and reusing which I love as well but you'll just take that little lip and turn it under and then you can hot glue the end part of your pillow together and it already has really nice seams along the edges so you only have to hot glue this one edge which I absolutely love as well now listen if you guys have a sewing machine or you just want to stitch this up that will work too you guys know that I love to use my hot glue gun so it works perfectly fine these are going to be popped out on my little patio most likely or I may put these in my little basket next to my fireplace so anyway have fun with it get creative and go for it Now here is how my pillows looked all popped into my adorable little basket. I love the good vibes only. This is going to be so super cute on my patio. I have a covered patio, which I've been decorating and all of that fun stuff. And I believe I'm also going to use some Scotch guard to Scotch guard the pillows so they stay nice and fresh and there's Benji Bear he had to check everything out and he started getting into my garland this garland is from Hobby Lobby in case you guys are wondering about the garland but say hey to Benji Bear he's my trusty assistant also my creative director and he's snoozing right now he likes to snooze on the job because he gets into literally everything <laughs> but he's actually a pretty good boy and doesn't chew up too much stuff This next at Dollar Tree DIY is so fun and easy, and all you need is a little wood plaque from the Dollar Tree Crafters square section and some pretty paper and a little candlestick. So I chose this kind of black and white buffalo check plaid paper from Hobby Lobby. It's only 69 cents, and you can even find their paper on sale and get a better deal. I traced out the size of the plaque, and then I'm going to Mod Podge the paper to the plaque and then pop it onto my little candlestick. Stick. So this is a super easy fun project. Anybody can do this. You guys could also use a little plate But I just thought this plaque would be perfect I have these cute little faux muffins that I love to decorate with that I get off of Amazon I'll leave a link for you guys in the description box below The 
next step to this fun and easy adorable little craft is to add some Mod Podge and don't add too much but I will tell you that wood takes a lot of Mod Podge because it absorbs really quickly and so you kind of have to work quickly and also use quite a bit but I did fine with this I just had a little bit of a dibble dabble spill and then I just grabbed my little sponge and sponged it up and then you can just add your pretty paper and look at how adorable this looks I think it's so cute and it's it's so easy. You gotta love a cute, fun, easy craft. I also added some Mod Podge to the top of this. And again, you can use waterproof Mod Podge if you're going to be placing something that may get wet on top of your little stand, which would be really cute to do, like put it next to your sink and add like some dish soap or something fun like that. Now I'm taking this cute little Dollar Tree candlestick and I'm going to hot glue my plaque to the top of that and voila, I have this fabulous little cake stand that was a total budget project and then I decided to go one step further and add a little bit of black paint around the edges to just give it a little bit more of a farmhouse chic style. So it worked perfectly. It's so easy to use with these little brushes and it's a total budget. I love it. It's a total win for me as well. This next DIY is so fun and easy. So I'm just using this family as the heart of our home. This was left over from Valentine's Day and I do love this sign in its original form. I displayed it next to my coffee bar and it was perfect. And I actually picked up two, one to craft with and one to use as is. But I'm gonna take some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand off the letters to make them a little bit more smooth. My idea is to create a fun little sign to go next to my beehive. Again, this is the first year that I've ever really done any bee decor, but I think it's really cute and super trendy. I noticed Hobby Lobby had a huge honeybee section as well as Walmart put out bee pillows which I actually did grab some bee pillows from Walmart they're five dollars in their outdoor garden section I'm using them on my patio they are adorable back to the sign you guys okay so I'm just going to use some Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge a nice little hearty layer on the base of my sign and then add my cute little honeybee sign part and this honey bee came from the farmer's market calendar that they did put out last season i found it in my crafting stash i was super excited <laughs> um, to find it and i did do a blog post with a cute little honey bee printable as well so if you guys go to my livy's romantic home blog you can look at some of my printables i post on there so you guys can check that out i'll leave it a link in the description box for you guys below if you didn't happen to find the calendar um, you can maybe use that printable it's not exactly like this, but it's pretty cute. I did add a layer of Mod Podge on top of my sign just to seal it in as well. Now this is the glossy Mod Podge, but you guys could choose matte or really whatever suits your fancy and floats your boat. I kind of thought about painting the frame black, but I decided just to leave it as is. Let me know what you guys think. I thought it looked nice offsetting the little lantern that I used on the other side. So that's kind of why I didn't go for black on it. But I do think that the frame would be really cute painted black or even white and then distressed with some black paint. I don't know, let me know what you guys think about that. But here it is popped into my super adorable little kitchen setting. I'm loving it. So fun and fabulous. Oh, and if you guys need a good new summer candle, lemon cake pop candle from Bath and Body Works smells phenomenal. It smells so delicious, like a lemon cake pop. <laughs> Now, last but not least, to finish up this fun little spring summer moment, I am going to take this clear plate from the Dollar Tree. Do you guys see my Mod Podge pretty much just roll across the table? 
I don't know how it didn't spill everywhere. Anyway, you're going to add a lot of Mod Podge for this project, but it does dry clear, I promise you. And then I've had this cute little um, tea towel and it says bloom where you're planted. This is also from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to Mod Podge the tea towel to my plate. So I've never tried this before. I actually saw um, this craft on TikTok. So I'm trying out a TikTok craft. So bear with me here. Um, so I will tell you that you need a lot of glue, especially around the edges. And so once I had this down, I ended up adding more glue around the edge and even just dabbed the rest of the glue that was in my brush on the back of the plate. And I had to let it dry overnight because there was so much glue on there. But you guys would be so amazed at the results. Now, the only tricky part I felt like was trimming off the edges of the plate once it was all dried. So. I don't know if you guys have any ideas for me on that. To be honest with you, I really need to get some new scissors. I had some really nice crafting scissors and I lost them and I have cleaned my craft room top to bottom. I still cannot find them. They are in the abyss somewhere of craft land. And if you guys are a crafter, you know what I mean by abyss of craft land. Even when it's tidy, I still feel like it's just not all the way there, but I digress. So again, I did have to add another huge giant layer of Mod Podge just to really smooth it down and get it on here. But once you add that boatload of Mod Podge and it's nice and wet, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and so once that was dry, and again, I did have to let it dry overnight. So you can see I had to add even more Mod Podge just to really get it on there. Another thing you guys can do too, is you can do the same idea with the Dollar Tree scarves, which takes a lot less Mod Podge and turns out just as adorable. So now here is the next day and I'm just taking my scissors and I'm trimming around the edge. And I will tell you that it seemed like the edge, like a little bit parts of it, you know, you could kind of see the towel just a little bit, like it wasn't completely clean and perfect. So I'm probably going to go back in with my hair trimming scissors because they are nice and sharp and I have a new pair on the way in the mail because I have been crafting with my 3D eye while we are going to be creating a beautiful wooden tray and I'm using this Dollar Tree sign. It's just the spring sign, but really any little board or sign will do. And then I'm taking two of the Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower block games and you'll find these in the kids section. I'm just beginning to glue the wood pieces to the sign. And at first I thought that making a pattern would be really cool on this. And then I ran into just a tiny bit of trouble at the end and I will explain, but you're just going to continue to glue, glue your blocks on. However, I would suggest to lay this all out first and not just go free gluing like I did. I just went kind of crazy and made this really cool creative pattern and then you can see kind of as I'm getting towards the edge on the bottom that oops I need to cut some blocks to fit in there so anyway just continue to glue your blocks and um, have fun with it and listen you guys this actually comes out really really amazing in the end and it was almost a craft that I just gave up on. I did have to ask though, Mr. Romantic for help. He did have to come to my rescue on this one, which very, very rarely happens with my crafting sessions. But I have this little small cutting tool that I use for small projects like this, and it was lost in Craftland, the ever abyss of Craftland, as you guys know. So he had to big, get out the big guns. And anyway, the next step for me was to finish gluing all of my blocks in, and then we're going to go in later and trim them off. But I did get started staining this just to see how the blocks would hold the stain. I've never created this before, but I think that this is really a fun one to do if you have have the opportunity and if you have an old piece of wood laying around and all of the Dollar Trees should carry these tumbling tower blocks again in the kids section. Now once I had it stained and I had trimmed the little edges off I did take this light sanding tool and sand over this and I will tell you that my friend Megan over at Glue Guns and Roses did a similar wooden um, tray piece. Now for the handles she used this really cool uh, Dollar Tree um, ribbon rope or not rope ribbon leather ribbon 
rope <laughs> anyway for her handles but I just used some nautical rope and two little cubes that I had stained and that went on there perfectly and voila we have a fabulous little wooden chic tray on a total budget I think total cost for this you know would be four dollars maybe plus the stain but you guys could always paint it and if you love that boho chic look or a little bit of a rustic flair which I have loved always mixing girly with rustic and all different kinds of styles together I think it just give your gives your eye more dimension to look at so here's how it came out I thought it was fun and fabulous on a total budget for this next Dollar Tree DIY, this is actually a Dollar Tree hack and a DIY combined into one. So you're gonna take a Dollar Tree pool noodle and you're just gonna slice it down the center and then a Dollar Tree hula hoop and you're going to press that noodle onto the hula hoop. I did end up using two of the Dollar Tree noodles. However, I didn't um, use both of them, just like one and a half basically. Now. Now I'm going to take and I'm just going to hot glue some burlap around my wreath and that's going to cover up the foam or if you have a ton of flowers you could just completely cover it with flowers but I wanted to have like kind of like a little, little bit of a rustic chic look. Now I had popped into my local thrift store and found some greenery garland for $1.25 and when I was checking out they commented on it and they said wow this is a great deal for $1.25 and I thought to myself yes if you only knew how many crafts and beautiful projects I'm creating and this is really gonna help me save a buck so I'm just taking some zip ties and I'm zip tying the greenery garland around the wreath and now let me tell you that Dollar Tree is carrying some amazing beautiful greenery I also find really beautiful greenery at Hobby Lobby look for their sales they do have 50% off sales constantly um, and then Michaels carries greenery as well as Walmart so you guys just check it out now I'm taking some of this Dollar Tree kind of it's like a dangling really pretty kind of flowy spring flower and I added a bundle of that to um, one side and then a bundle of that to the top side so kind of cascading in and around both sides of the wreath but giving it plenty of space because this is an extra large wreath and there's no way you could buy a grapevine base for you know three dollars is basically what it costs to make this um, as far as the base is concerned now i'm taking these florals now these were left over from michael's from the beginning of the year and they're just some pretty roses i had them in an arrangement and i ended up changing out my arrangement so i added them to this wreath the next thing i want to do is make a quick and easy bow so i'm using this ribbon i found this ribbon from burlapfabric.com they actually sent it to me probably about two years ago, honestly, you guys, it's just been sitting in my stash and I thought, you know, I really wanna make something with more neutral tones. So I'm using my Easy Bow Maker and I'm just going back and forth and it's gonna be about a seven inch bow on each side, or you guys can make an Olivia bow. Super easy, no tools required for that one. You guys can check the link in my description box for that bow video. But make yourself a big, fabulous bow. If your hands are tired, whip out your bow maker. If you're in the mood to tie one, go ahead and tie one. So now that my easy bow is done, I'm just gonna zip tie it together and then pop it on to my wreath. Now, let me tell you, this is an extra large wreath. So this is fabulous to hang on the side of your house if you have a large door. Um, I hung this actually in my crafting studio. Now it may get moved around to my living room possibly. Um, I do love having a wreath on the door from my dining room to my living room. But now I made a quick little loopy bow here and attached that and then voila, here we have this fabulous wreath on a total budget. No one would ever know that that was a hula hoop and a pool noodle. And if you don't have burlap fabric, dig into your fabric stash or grab an old white t-shirt. You can cut it into strips and wrap that around your wreath. I have done that so many times when I didn't have the right colored fabric. I'll just look into some old clothes or old fabric pieces even our thrift store has like a bin of drop cloths and a lot of times I'll pick that up for making like rag wreath wreaths or rag garlands so always be thrifty and creative in how you approach everything fun and fabulous on a budget <laughs> 
for this Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna create a fabulous tablecloth garland. This is gonna be weatherproof, so it's gonna be amazing for any outdoor space. Okay, so take a Dollar Tree tablecloth out of its package and don't unfold it. Just make it to where it's like long wise. And then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut strips. And you do want to leave about four inches at the top. And you're gonna cut into about eight to 10 inches of the square. Then you can unfold it and I did this actually two ways. So this is the first way that I did this. I just unfolded it and then I took it and I folded it back together and I folded it again. And then you can just take and you can roll it into your little tassel. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys need to pause it and rewind this to look at that again, it's so super easy, but basically now all your little tassels are going to be hanging down this way. And this way, the tassels are really nice and full. So I really do love this look. And then I'm going to share with you guys another way you can do it where the tassels are just more shredded looking. So I am taking some zip ties to zip tie the end. So you wanna fold the end over to where you have a little loop and then just add your zip tie and trim that off. And voila, you have a fabulous little tassel on a total budget. They're gonna be weatherproof. Now let me share with you guys another way. Okay, so make sure that you're leaving yourself four inches at the top because you do wanna have a large enough loop to be able to string your string through. Again, you're gonna cut your tassels same way as before and cut about eight to 10 inches across here. I kind of eyeballed it honestly and the squares on the tablecloth are about eight to 10 inches. So it's kind of a cheat sheet. Unfold your cut and then cut it straight down the center. Super easy, you guys, voila, that's all you have to do. And then you can separate it again if you want um, and cut it one more time. So then you're just gonna take and layer them all on the top. So here's that second cut. You're just gonna cut through that tablecloth and then you can layer them all together to where the tassel is all kind of facing out. So you should have four pieces to layer on top of each other. I hope this is making sense. Now you're gonna take and just roll it. It's super easy, like you're rolling up a good old fashioned burrito. And then once you have that, you're going to take and bend the little top part over. And I used zip ties. Now, I know that you can also use staples. However, I feel like the staples would have been hard to get through this amount of plastic. And plus, I could not find my stapler anywhere. Mr. Romantic didn't have one in his office. So we went with zip ties and it worked just fine. Plus it's also weatherproof. So anyway, if this is gonna be a little birthday party outside or an outdoor get together, now you're gonna take some string and string it through. And you may need to use your pencil or a pen or a little something to kind of poke that string through, but don't push too hard to where your tassel comes undone. So here it is all strung up. I think this is so fun. And you can see, I kind of layered in the different tassels to just share with you guys how they look hanging. So you can see the fluffier, larger ones are actually the ones that we didn't cut. And then the ones that are more stretched are the ones that we did cut. So it's up to you. You guys can look back on the video and see which style you like the best, but I wanted to share both of them with you. And so again, this would be fun and fabulous for any party. Dollar, Car Dollar Tree carries all kinds of tablecloths and these are the plastic tablecloths. So super easy to find and to use. Now for this next DIY, I thought I would share with you guys a super easy way to make like a little rag garland. So I'm taking with a little Dollar Tree light up um, light pieces that are battery operated. And then I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree ribbon and I'm cutting it about 10 inches long. About 10 to 12 inches really is how long I needed to cut mine to get it to not in the center. Um, but basically we're just going to take this and we're going to um, tie it on to our little lighted garland. And you guys can use any ribbon you love. You can use strips of fabric, whatever suits your fancy and floats your boat, whatever you have in your stash. I had this ribbon hanging out in my stash forever. And I will tell you, it may be kind of easier to do with not wired ribbon because this ribbon from Dollar Tree is wired. And I will tell you, I used four rolls of ribbon plus the little battery operated lights from Dollar Tree. And so it was a $5 project, which I thought was pretty fabulous because I saw one of these in a decor store and it was $25 for a lighted rag garland. And I thought, oh my goodness, we can totally make this on a budget. So now you're just gonna take and you're gonna tie a little knot and then your little um, garland is going to begin to take shape. Now, I did think that this greenery light up piece was so cute. And actually a sweet friend of mine, 
sent this to me. Thank you. Um, but listen, I could not find really any way that I wanted to use it with the greenery on it. And I knew it'd be kind of pretty with the greenery peeking through like a little peekaboo. Um, so I didn't like push them all the way together. I kind of left a little space so it could kind of cascade in and around. And I was really excited to find a way to use this and just a fun idea for you guys. And you guys can really think about these could be for 4th of July, just make them red, white, and blue. You could make these for a baby shower, a bridal shower, really whatever, you know, space you want to decorate. And the other thing is, is Dollar Tree, um, for every holiday too, will select the plug-in little small Christmas lights. And that may have even worked better because it would have been a brighter light shining through. Now I did check this in the evening time and you could see the lights. So it turned out actually really pretty. And again, so easy on a total budget. You guys can totally do this. This craft could be for all ages no hot glue required just a lot of tying and cutting <laughs> For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to make a beautiful, amazing Pottery Barn dupe basket. We're going to make a smaller version. I did make a larger version a couple videos back, but you're just going to take a Dollar Tree Flower and Garden 10, and I just popped the little handles off. And then using about four bundles of nautical rope, you can just take and begin to hot glue the nautical rope at the base, and then just begin to work your way around. So I do find when I'm beginning this, it's easy to kind of, it's easier to flip it over to get it started and then you can kind of lean it on its side as you glue along and I do also kind of push the nautical rope down into the next one and then once I get to the top of this I do like to do a nice little lip around the top and that way it actually looks more like a basket and less like a metal tin and you could even use an old pillowcase to pop down inside of it for a liner I thought about that once I got done with it and I was like oh, I should have done that first and then I would have had it lined. Anyway, you can also take three pieces of Dollar Tree nautical rope, braid them together, and then you have some braided handles. And this was so easy to do, you guys. Um, and then you just hot glue your little handles onto the side of your basket. And here is how my basket looks after I got the little handle on. I think it's looking really cute. And then I just hot glued another side of the ropes to the other side. So it looks like it has really cute little handles. And let me tell you, they're selling these online at Pottery Barn. And I'm sure they may be a little bit larger and maybe a little bit more professional looking, but they're like 50 to $150. And we did this on a total budget, maybe five, six bucks at the most. And you guys have a really cute little Pottery Barn dupe. It can go so easily into any little space. I just popped some flowers into it in this cute little beaded piece. And I popped it on top of my little rustic chic tray that we DIY'd in. So, oh my goodness, I was just so excited for how this came out. I thought it was really pretty. And I think I may display it in the fall next to my larger basket with some pretty um, little mini signs in it. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you guys a super easy hack and DIY for how to create a really cute little tassel. So while I was working on my basket craft, I saw that the Dollar Tree nautical rope tends to fray. And I thought, wow, that would be the perfect tassel. So you just take the Dollar Tree nautical rope and begin to pull it apart. And then bam, you have like an instant tassel. <laughs> so however much, um, you know, space or however long that you want your tassel to be, I did two pieces. So you just take and pull it apart and then just kind of like, you know, fluff it out. And then you guys have an amazing little tassel. And then I just set mine aside once I had got it, it like pulled apart because I decided I wanted to make like a little beaded piece. Again, I saw this on Pottery Barn website and I think it was like, $40 for a beaded piece with like a rope tassel on the end and I was like oh my goodness we can totally do this on a budget and I will tell you also 
um, that I got my beads off of Amazon. Now Dollar Tree also carries beads. However, their beads are colored and I wanted this to be a little bit more rustic chic. So I will link some beads in my Amazon store and you guys can check out my Amazon store. It's Olivia's Romantic Home Amazon. It's in the description box below, but I'm just taking some wire and I'm stringing my little wooden beads on the wire. Now, if you're super patient, you can also paint these and make them look like sea glass. I wasn't that patient today, but I may do that in the future. Now I'm just taking the wire and you just wrap it around that first bead and that creates the end of your bead. You don't have to glue anything. It stays on perfectly and bam, <laughs> so easy on a budget. So here we go. Now we've got our little Dollar Tree nautical rope tassel and I'm just taking a piece of twine and I'm going to tie the tassel onto the twine. Now this may be not maybe wasn't like the best approach, but to me it was the easiest approach. So you use wire to string your beads and you just use nautical rope to make your tassel and voila, you have one of those really cool tassel pieces that you guys see everywhere, Hobby Lobby, you know, they they just look really neat. And I think it would be fun too, to like put these on a Bible next to a cross or, you know, just wherever you guys want to put it. I popped it in my little rope basket and there we have it. We have this fabulous little piece on a total budget. We didn't have to spend, you know, 40 plus dollars <laughs> for one. Um, so I hope you guys are inspired and you have fun with this. Oh, and the giant thing of beads on Amazon, I believe are $13. And I've used these beads for probably six months to a year now. So it's a huge pack, well worth the $13. Now for this next DIY, I'm going to take one of these little plastic trays and you guys can pick these up at the Dollar Tree or at Dollar General or wherever you can find like a larger plastic tray. And I had this beautiful aqua spray paint in my stash and it says bonds to plastic. So look for the Rust-Oleum cans that say bond to plastic because this is a plastic tray. You can also lay down a layer of spray Mod Podge first. It was a rainy day, so I did get a drip on one side of it that I had to let dry, but I'm giving it a nice healthy dose of spray paint and I did go back in and do another coat once this coat had dried but I think this is so beautiful and this is that pottery barn blue that you're gonna see on their website now I layered on top of my tray with this little vintage white tray and then I also saw that pottery barn was like setting up like a just a little tray of candles and their candles are like you guys, they're like $35, $39 a piece for LED candles. So let me tell you, go on Amazon. And again, I'll link some in my Amazon store. You guys can just find them anywhere at Walmart, um, Dollar General, but they'll come straight to your house. I order mine on Amazon. They come with a battery remote timer. They last forever <laughs> and they're amazing. They're so foolproof. They're safe for pets and kids and you guys have a beautiful tray and it just looks so elegant and you didn't have to do anything except for have a pretty tray, some candles, and then I'm sharing with you guys how you could use like seashells around it for a very fabulous summer beach vibe. And then here's another idea. I didn't want to like pull everything apart, but you can take some of those fake lemons and limes. You can also order these off of Amazon. Um, but you can add those in and around your tray or you can use Dollar Tree stones. So as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? And the secret question is, where is your favorite summer vacation spot? And if you don't get to go on vacation this year, what is your favorite place to dream about going on vacation? Um, I would love to hear in the comments below. That will give you guys an entry into the $100 Amazon gift card giveaway that I'm going to be hosting for you guys and I just want to thank you guys for being here and also when I mentioned that we had a tornado warning earlier in the day it is now a sunny day um, way 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 later and everything is all good so nobody was harmed in our little warning <laughs> Yeah.
that I had to create an extra large outdoor mat. So I'm taking four of the Dollar Tree mats and these are just plain mats and I flipped them to where the ridge side was up and then I'm taking some duct tape and I'm duct taping two sections together and then duct taping the next part of the section. So I wanted a piece of duct tape for every section and then I'm taking a piece of duct tape and reinforcing that on all of the sections. And then I do add a crisscross in the center just to make sure that it's nice and steady together. The next thing I did was I just grabbed some fabric from my fabric stash and this was just a scrap piece of fabric you can tell I've been cutting on and so then I'm just going to pop it onto my little mat and measure kind of to see the excess bit of fabric. I don't want to waste this. I actually want to take the rest of the fabric and make like a little rag garland eventually um, or just use it for another project. I think this um, kind of khaki buffalo check is really cute. Okay so once I had that done um, I started hot gluing at the edge of the fabric onto the mat. Now I actually made one of these last season and it worked really great for the season and this is just a fun little way that you guys can recover a mat and um, you know not break the bank basically and this is just going to be used for my front porch underneath my little um I have a cute little bench on my front porch and I was looking on Pinterest and it said ways to make your front porch look cozy and it said add a mat and I remember that I had grabbed these Dollar Tree floor mats and I was like oh I have the perfect idea for this okay so anyway um, continue to hot glue your fabric on to your mat and I'm trying to think if there's any other glue that might work like even better I used hot glue last year and it seemed to hold up just fine so continue to hot glue as you go and then just give your little Edges, a cute little tuck but again this isn't going to get really any traffic it's kind of just more for decor pieces or purposes <laughs> and so again I'm just continuing to hot glue as I go along and then once I was finished with that okay I knew that I needed to waterproof it somehow because we don't want to just leave fabric hanging out so I did grab some scotch guard and before I scotch guarded it I just used my iron and kind of went over the iron to smooth it down the fabric you may not be able to tell in the video but it was a, like a little bit wrinkly and so I didn't want wrinkled fabric um, so anyway and here's that scotch guard it's water and sun shield scotch guard I actually ordered it on Amazon I think last fall I meant to use it on some of my outdoor pillows and so I've had it floating around in my craft stash and I just gave it a nice coating I will tell you to use this outside it does have quite a bit of an odor and so now this was in my crafting studio so it wasn't that big of a deal but next time I use it, I definitely will be using it outside. So I gave it a real, really nice, healthy coating, and I will update you guys and let you know how long it's able to last. I thought this was a really cute idea for basically four dollars for the mat, and then I already had the fabric, and then I just scotch guarded it. Now, the other thing I did last year with my mat was I used some poly acrylic. I didn't use poly acrylic on this one because I wanted it to be able to dry quicker so I could share with you guys how it looked. Um, um, but the polyacrylic does make it like really nice and stiff and water resistant. So I will tell you guys which one I um, end up liking the best. So let me know what you guys think about this. I think it's a cute little idea for underneath this front porch bench. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you how to make a beautiful blooming floral using one of the Dollar Tree wine buckets. Okay, so this is so easy. All you guys have to do is grab a Dollar Tree wine bucket and pop some foam inside of it and then like some little rocks. And then I'm taking some Dollar Tree greenery and you want to cut the greenery at the stem. And so I have some of the leafy, leafy greeny, greenery from Dollar Tree and then also some of this kind of like spiny, um, it almost looks a little bit like a eucalyptus greenery I'm not for sure it just says greenery on the tag but anyway I'm going to alternate the fluffy greenery with the smaller greenery and you want to bunch them really close together so I was watching a floral designer over the weekend and I saw how he was doing a fresh flower arrangement and he was using a ton of greenery and it turned out beautifully now he was doing a bouquet of roses but I thought we could try doing something using Dollar Tree supplies and doing something more summer themed. So I ended up loving how this turned out. But the key is what he said and is what I'm going to pass along to you guys is to do all of your greenery around the base and make it really, really nice and full. And then you can just choose a couple of really beautiful select flowers to put in the center. And so really get it really nice and full. So 
for this wine bucket, I'm using four bundles total of this greenery. So two of the big stem leafy and then two of the little eucalyptus and I did cut them. Usually I'm kind of lazy with my arrangements and I just pop greenery in, you know, on the stem. But I will tell you guys, I feel like cutting the greenery just made such a huge improvement and difference in how it looked. It was a little bit more time consuming, but I will tell you it was kind of therapeutic. And I think my next goal um, for one of my upcoming floral arrangements would be to do something with fresh flowers. I've never really tried a flesh, fresh flower arrangement. Anyway, I'm continuing to add some greenery. And then for this one, I wanted to make this a very versatile arrangement. So in my mind, I thought, let's do something that can go through the summer. I chose a summer white, this white hydrangea, and this is actually one of the Michaels <laughs> um, clearance Christmas flowers. So believe it or not, it has a tiny bit of like glittery snow on the ends, but you really can't see it at all. I promise you. That's a little tip that I shared with you guys a couple months ago is to shop the craft stores on their clearance time. Now these were some Valentine's Day roses that I had left over. I just trimmed them off their stem and then I'm popping four of these in and then I use four of the hydrangea bundles. And check this out. I feel like it came out really nice. I've never been professionally trained in flower arranging but I feel like it looks pretty darn sweet I popped in some Dolly Tree American flags into this and I'm gonna display this on my front porch it's gonna honor Memorial Day 4th of July and I just think it feels and looks really festive and then once those holidays are over and we get into you know the end of July September months I can remove some of the summer flowers and add in something like some sunflowers that are going to begin to transition to fall so I'm always thinking about how we can get a little bit more bang for our buck with our floor Comment and let me know what you guys think about this. Are you going to be decorating it for um, any kind of holiday in the next upcoming month or so? If so, 4th of July. Um, do you love to do sunflowers for summer? I love to hear how you all are brightening up your spaces, whether it be your front porch, back porch, or even inside your home. take several of the Dollar Tree Lays. So I grabbed four bundles of Lays. And so in each bundle, there's three Lays. So what I'm going to do is just take this little Dollar Tree styrofoam frame and some zip ties. And I'm just going to zip tie this Lay to the frame. So I zip tied it on each end, then trimmed off the zip tie. And I tried to keep the zip ties all on one side, like the little bumpy end. That way you guys can't see it or my guests that come to my front door can't see it. So again, I'm zip tying this next lay on here and you're just going to continue on with this process so you can either zip tie the the zip tie around the lay part or you can try to string it through I tried it both ways and it seemed to work pretty good both ways um, the other idea for a wreath like this is to completely remove each lay and just hot glue them to the base of the wreath. Now I did that last summer, so you guys can always go back and check out my huge summer videos from last year, but I wanted to give you guys a different spin on how you can do a summer lay wreath. And Dollar Tree will carry lays in different colors. They have some beautiful pastel colors that will be coming out for midsummer, but I thought this would be really fun and fabulous for a 4th of July wreath, just something really neat. And the other idea for this is this would make a great little centerpiece so you could build like an arrangement a floral arrangement in the center of this pop this onto a little outdoor summer garden party table um, and you'd be good to go so there's two ways really that you could use this one as a wreath and then one as like a little centerpiece and comment down below if you guys have any other ideas for how you could use this but I thought especially if you're crunched for time and you don't want to get out your glue gun and you just want to make a really quick little simple wreath I thought this was a pretty fantastic idea again pop on a show grab some zip ties now I will tell you that the Dollar Tree lays shed if you guys can see very closely on my crafting table they shed a lot, so you may want to put down you know, a piece of plastic or whatnot if you're working in a space that you don't want to get a bunch um, of 
little threads on, I guess they, what they were. Now I'm taking some of these pre-made patriotic bows. These are one of my favorite things to grab at the Dollar Tree for the 4th of July. And I'm just gonna zip tie the patriotic bow on to my little lay here. And that's going to keep it on really nice and sturdy. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of ribbon and tie that over the zip tied part so you don't see the zip tie. We wanna make our work look as seamless as possible. Um, and another thing is that I was thinking is be really cute to jazz it up with a jewel in the center. Now, if you were doing something like this for Memorial Day and you're gonna be placing this um, for a loved one, um, I was thinking you could use a special brooch or badge or whatnot right here in the center, I think would be really nice to honor somebody um, that you care for. So here's how it turned out. I will be displaying this by my front door. Um, and I hope to actually make some more. It was really fun and easy. I actually too thought about putting it on my little front garden bike. Let me know you guys, should we put it by the front door or my garden bike? It's pretty cute. <laughs> For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with y'all how to make a really beautiful faux terracotta pot, and then we're going to make it into a fabulous topiary. So to start out this project, you're going to need some patch and paint. It's a featherweight spackle. I get mine at Home Depot and that little container over there I found at Dollar Tree. I'm then also taking some orange apple barrel craft paint and some brown craft paint and I'm just going to mix it together. I want to create kind of like a vintage chic terracotta look with these plastic Dollar Tree containers. To be totally honest with you, I kind of overbought on my plastic containers this season and I really felt really guilty about going to the store and buying terracotta terracotta pots when I already had these on hand. So I thought, why not turn them into a ter faux terracotta pot? And something is very therapeutic about mixing this together. Oh, and I meant to tell you, okay, so with your spackle, you mix one cup of spackle to one cup of regular paint. So I mixed one cup of spackle to one cup of my white paint and then added in the rest of my paint for color. And I'm taking a popsicle stick and just beginning to run this over um, the plastic terracotta pot. Now I will tell you that it might have been helpful for me to have laid down a layer of Mod Podge first. So my spackle had something to grip to a little bit more and I think also I may have gotten it a little bit runny. I may have added a little bit too much paint. As you guys could tell, I didn't measure it. I just kind of went for it, which is kind of how I'm in the kitchen. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work so well. So anyway, here's another idea too. I mean, it worked out fine. It goes on really nicely. And if you set these out in the sun, they dry in 30 minutes to an hour, like really nicely. Here you could also use your hand, and that was also kind of therapeutic as well. If I didn't have like my long fingernails, I would definitely have my gloves off and be going for it. Now here is it already dry, and now we're gonna make it into a topiary. I'm using some Dollar Tree styrofoam. I hot glued that to the base and then added a dowel. I end up using a different dowel, so let's focus on the topiary part. I'm adding moss to this little Dollar Tree foam ball, and then I'm going to take this. It's just like viney greenery. It came from Amazon, but Dollar Tree is also selling a viney, green, viney greenery, so just grab whatever you have in your stash. The next thing I'm doing is I'm going to take and I'm gonna make a pin. So I took a part of that little uh, stem from my greenery, folded it in half, and then just pushed it down into the foam ball to create like a floral pin. Now they make floral pins. You can buy them at the craft store. I didn't have any, and this is just a little hack that I personally use, because I don't use floral pins really enough to think about buying them. Anyway, <laughs> now I'm gonna take some of this Dollar Tree greenery, and I'm just cutting it off, and I'm poking it in kind of randomly, but also in a pattern a little bit on either side of the um, topiary and just kind of creating like just a blooming topiary, I guess. Listen, I love Nicholas Fairford. If you have not checked him out, he has this beautiful YouTube channel, super relaxing. Um, but he does a ton of these topiaries and I've been eyeing them and drooling over them. Um, I think he buys his maybe store-bought, but I'm gonna make my own. Now I took three Dollar Tree wooden dowels, zip tied them together and then popped my little topiary into the top. And then I'm going in with some 
um, just a little antique Waverly wax and I'm just going to kind of stain the base of this to make it look more like a piece of wood or stick. In fact, I probably could have gone out to my yard actually and grabbed <laughs> a little bit bigger of a stick and I may actually do that. I don't even know why I didn't think about that when I was doing this. I created two of these. One had a little bit less of the greenery, but I think they turned out pretty fantastic. Um, now, if you're going to leave these outside, you need to seal them with some waterproof Mod Podge and add a ton of stones to the base. I actually will end up taking these back inside, but they just look so pretty out here. I'm going to work on doing some for my outdoors, but I'll need to definitely seal them with some waterproof Mod Podge. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to use this pillowcase. I ordered a set of these off of Amazon. They're like 12 bucks for a set of four. And then I'm taking four of these Dollar Tree little foam cushions. They're little seat cushions. I actually bought them to use for summer, but I'm not quite with the tropical all the way summer vibe yet. I think it's not quite hot enough. We don't have our little pool put up yet. And so I want to remain, I want to keep these, but I want to use them for another purpose for now. So I'm just going to take and tie the chair pieces together. So just take all those strings, gather them together and tie them in like a loose little knot. What I want to create is a cute little seat cushion. This is going to be so easy. And you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you just go buy a seat cushion? Well, seat cushions are expensive and I only need it for one seat. I have this pretty wicker chair on my front porch. It doesn't have a cushion. And I remembered that I had these seat cushions that I want to use for later in the summer. So I thought, well, I'll grab this. I'm going to scotch guard it though with some water and sun scotch guard stuff here. And I had this in my crafting stash from like back in November. I am finally remembering to use it. And so I just scotch guarded that really quickly. Now, Here's another idea. I knew that I would want to put some cute little summer pillows on my front porch. I really feel like I'm a pillow hoarder. I had these in my studio, these little inserts, and they're kind of like a little flat. They're not super great. So I don't want to ruin them by putting them outside. So I thought if I put them inside of the Walmart bag, this is going to be on my covered front porch. I don't think it's going to get a lot of leather. I love putting pillows out there, but I have a major problem with pillows. They go flying off the minute it gets windy and we live on top of a hill. So here's my idea. And I will let you guys know if this is going to be a long-term solution. I'm putting a little dumbbell in the bottom of my pillow. We'll see if this is going to work. I also decided to scotch guard this pillow as well. Please note, take your scotch guard outside. I was in a little bit of a hurry trying to get these done and I did notice it was rather fumey. Um, once I got done with these. So anyway, that's just a little tip for me to you. Scotch guard your stuff outside. But anyway, I did the same thing with the little blue pillow, put it inside of a plastic bag, popped it into this um, pillowcase, and then <laughs> I'm dropping a dumbbell but down in here. Now don't worry, this is going to go back behind a flower arrangement. There's a sign. So nobody's actually going to be sitting on these pillows. And I'm going to put them to the back so if somebody did remove all of my decor and then try to lean back on a pillow <laughs> anyway here's a way you can make a quick little pillow with uh, just a couple of the Dollar Tree pads and a little pillowcase I don't know if you guys are like me but you have like a lot of these little pillowcases laying around again you can get a 12 pack on Amazon I have some of my Amazon store in my description box below so here's my little front um, wicker chair there we have it we have some cute little new pillows on a total budget using stuff i already had for this next dollar tree diy i'm going to share with you guys how to make a really cute terracotta pot bowl and floral arrangement so we're going to use some of this dap featherweight spackle and one cup of spackle to one cup of paint and then you can add in some more paint for color um, i didn't measure mine it's probably helpful if you do anyway i used a popsicle stick to really mix it up up really really good a fork works even better um, and then I went back in just to kind of give it a little bit more orange with some more orange paint and then I just dipped my hand in. I do have gloves on and you guys could do this without gloves if, but I didn't want it all down in my fingernails um, and you can just smooth it over one of those Dollar Tree party bowls these are in the party bowl section or in the party section at Dollar Tree these clear glass bowls no they're not glass sorry plastic <laughs> 
but I want to make a terracotta bowl. Again, I've really been crushing on that terracotta look. I think it looks so elegant and you just want to smooth on one nice coat and you can go back in and seal this with some waterproof Mod Podge. That will make it a little bit more weatherproof and last a little bit longer, which I plan to do with all of my faux, cotta, faux terracotta creations. Now I'm just going to use some Dollar Tree foam, pop that into the base of my little bowl here. I did end up filling it and I just used some hot glue to kind of attach all the foam together. And then I dumped some rocks or little stones down in here to give it some weight so it doesn't go flying wherever <laughs> I decide to put it. I did end up using this inside, but I share with you guys how you could also use it outside. Now we're starting with greenery. This is Dollar Tree greenery. You wanna start at the very base and move your greenery in and around the base of your bowl. Get it really, really close to where it's just cascading over. So again, I was watching this floral arranger over the weekend. He did this really beautiful fresh flower arrangement, and it really impressed me how much greenery he used at the beginning. And if I can go back and find the video again, I will try to let you guys know who it was. I have no clue. I was just watching YouTube. I happened on it, and it stuck in my mind. And now I'm using some of this thrift store longer greenery. I did add in some moss to make sure that I had enough greenery to cover. It did make a little bit hard though to get some of my floral picks in, just a little note. Um, anyway, this longer greenery was just in like an old thrift store arrangement that I grabbed last year. It's been laying around, so I'm really trying to pull out all of the flowers I have in my stash. Now, again, I'm using some white hydrangeas left over from Christmas time or the new year. Bought them on clearance, 80% off, and they were like Dollar Tree prices. I used three of those, and then I'm going with some taller Dollar Tree greenery to pop into the center. So I just want this arrangement to feel fresh and fun and summery, and with the white large hydrangea pieces, we can pop those out and put anything in there that we want. So I'm trying to create arrangements that will last, that'll go a little bit further than, you know, just a normal arrangement. So we can add American flags into here. Um, just change it out with whatever colors you love and that you're decorating with. I wanted to go a little bit neutral though, um, so I could make decisions on some pops of color once I get to that point. And then I just had, again, some more little greenery that I'm popping in. So this floral arranger that I was watching, he says, do your greenery, pop in some flowers, and do then do more layers of greenery. And at first while I was watching him, I was like, ah, oh, that's just going to be way too much. But it's never too much in my book. I thought it turned out fabulous. And this is totally different than what he did, but this is my take on it. Anyway, as always, guys, comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video? Which one you'll, will you be recreating? I do have a secret question for you. Recently, I have been crushing on the color blue. So do you guys decorate with blue? Drop a blue heart emoji down below or let, let me know what is your favorite color to decorate with. I love hearing what you guys are up to. I get so inspired by everyone. Have a gorgeous, fabulous, blessed day. And I will pop in the cute little clip of Benji Bear. share with y'all Benji Bear getting his very first pup cone or puppy dog cone. They have them at Culver's and I believe at Starbucks. And this was a hot day. He had gone to the groomers. I picked him up from the groomers and decided to feed him a pup cone, which maybe wasn't the best idea because he did get like little ice cream in his beard. But let me tell you guys on this spring day, he was living his best life. And I'm telling you what, he was in love. And check out that cute little chili pepper scarf they put on him. I guess because he was a little hot tamale or really probably because it matched, matched his little collar, which I found this red and green collar on Amazon. It was $8. So anyway, I thought you guys would get a total kick out of Benji Bear getting his very first pup cone. And hello, all you puppy dog fans and Benji Bear fans out there. I know that he has a little crew that watches him too. So I thought you guys would just love seeing this. And it was every bit as good as we can imagine. He loves this and he doesn't get that 
very often. In fact, it's his first time, probably maybe only once every couple months. So here's Tinky Bear. You guys ask about Tinky. She's a kitty cat and she just kind of hangs out. She doesn't really like, you know, going for walks with me. Although when we walk down the hill, she will walk down the hill and kind of scoot through the woods. And I'm always wondering what Benji Bear is barking at and he's barking at Tink. But she's kind of a little bit more laid back and not really wanting to be the star of the show as much. But Benji Bear, here he is on his walk and I have to share with you guys some irises are blooming in our neighborhood look at this beautiful show and then mine are always the last to bloom so for this dollar tree diy i am really excited to share with you how to create this diy little side table or garden planter so i'm using five of the dollar tree garden planters and they're in this really cool geometric shape i hot glued the first two together so i just flipped one over hot glued it um, end to end and then added in some stones for weight we don't want our table flying away and then I'm adding another layer of hot glue and flipping that garden planter over I'm just continuing to add it as I go try to do your best to get your seams together you can also use e6000 glue if this table is going to be outside or in the sunlight that would be a great idea and then once you get to the top you can choose whatever top you want you could use a mirror you could use a cute little plate the next thing I did was I used some of this really beautiful metallic spray paint and I decided to go a little bit glam with mine. Now, it's really cute white, but again, I wanted to add just a little bit of touch of glam to my back patio. And so I went painting it with this really beautiful gold spray paint. And I did one layer and then did another layer after that was dry. I'm also using this Dollar Tree charger and this is a wooden, it's like a faux wooden charger. I didn't want to cover up the wood part but I did want to make sure that the underneath part of this was sprayed gold as well so if you were to look up underneath the table it doesn't look like a charger I guess <laughs> and so I'm just using some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue the charger to the top of my table again use e6000 glue if this is going to be a high traffic table or it's going to get into the heat and then I just pop my little charger on top of that and then you can really go to town decorating it um, this is under a covered patio porch so I think it will be fine as is I have my little rote table out here as well as my little lemon table on my patio as well and here's how I styled it just with this really pretty planter and a couple of these other Dollar Tree planters and I'm going to share with you guys how to create this blue planter you will never guess what we used to make this so fun and fabulous on a total budget for this next Dollar Tree DIY I want to share with you all how to build a glamorous vase on a budget using Dollar Tree supplies. Okay, so we're gonna use these Dollar Tree candlesticks and then some of their mini fish bowls. And I'm just using E6000 glue and that's gonna give a permanent hold. And E6000 glue is great for gluing glass on glass. And then I used a dab of hot glue and I'm going to attach those and I let these dry for a while. In fact, I used them also in another DIY to share with you guys how to create like a little faux succulent garden. So you guys can fill these little glass bowls with pretty much anything that your heart desires or you can take it up another level and you can glue everything together and make this large vase. Okay, so I glued the E6000 um, to the bottom of the candlestick and had flipped the little bowl over and now I'm adding some hot glue again just for temporary and then permanent hold and then I added one of the Dollar Tree vases to the top of this and then I decided to get super extra and go for some gems or little faux acrylic jewels on the outside of my vase now don't mind the black part on that vase I am going to paint this and excuse my hot glue gun it has moss from another Dollar Tree project and that Dollar Tree moss is really hard to get off the hot glue guns so I need to give a good scraping but I apologize for its um, rather a crafty appearance so anyway again I'm just gluing some gems on and then be sure after you're done gluing all your gems on to like pull away any of those little strings from your glue if you decide to paint it like I did you guys could also add things down inside of that bowl vase to create just a really beautiful decor piece you don't have to paint this at all so then once I had that done I decided to add another layer of gems to the top of this I just went super extra on this one you guys 
And then I decided to paint it with this gold spray paint. Again, I wanted a glam, large, tall vase to put some spring summer flowers in and also to kind of match in with my little table that I created. Now I will tell you that this glass jar, because of the thin base, um, you may want to put something down inside of the vase when you make your floral arrangement to get it to not tip over if it's going to be in wind. I did notice like when I was making this arrangement outside, <laughs> it wanted to tip over because of the wind. And also I'm using these like dangling flowers and that probably also made it kind of a little bit uh, top heavy. So now I'm adding in some beautiful roses and those are just some Dollar Tree like blooming flowers. I can't remember what those are. Comment down below if you guys remember what those are. And these are just some roses that I had left over honestly from Christmas. If you guys go to the Michaels um, clearance sale on their florals, you guys can get 80% off any seasonal floral. So continue to add some florals, have fun with it, get creative and use whatever colors you have in your stash. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I am so excited to share with you how you can take one of those Dollar Tree garden planters and you can take a piece of paper and trace a little template. And then you can take one of the Dollar Tree placemats. And I chose this Moroccan tile placemat because I wanted to make this look like a real Moroccan um, tile garden planter. I've had this in my head to do for a while. So I was just really excited to make it come to life. So now I'm taking my little template and I'm drawing the little squares and I'm going to then cut those out and hot glue them around to make it look like a Moroccan tile vase. I've really noticed that, you know, you can really use blues in a lot of your spring summer decor and it can go with almost any style of spring summer decor like the Moroccan tiles or the blues. It can go glam. It can be very traditional. Um, and this little Dollar Tree placemat, I felt like was genius to put this together. I felt like it came out really high end. And of course it's on a total budget with a placemat and for $1 for a placemat and then $1 for the planter, you can't go wrong. So once you have all of your little squares cut, um, I did have to go in and kind of like trim mine up just a little bit. Then I'm just going to hot glue them around the entire planter. And also you have to work quickly, quickly once you get your glue on. So once you get that glue on, be ready ready to put your tile right on there or your faux piece of plastic. <laughs> Um, and I'm wondering almost too, if you couldn't use super glue on this part, you guys, let me know what you think about that. This is the first for me on this one. Um, so anyway, and then I'm just, again, adding glue all the way around. And I also tried to match up the tiles with how I cut them. So I cut them in wherever the next tile was I tried to make it look like it was like one flow although there was that there was that one corner that I had to cut a different size anyway now I'm going for it with a little bit of gold paint and this is the gold paint from Arteza brand it's really like looks makes it look really like real gold so it makes things look really high end you can get it on Amazon I'll link some in my store for you guys and now I'm just going to take um, my little foam piece from Dollar Tree and create a pretty little arrangement so I'm adding some greenery to the center and then some of these little faux Dollar Tree fern greenery pieces. And I just cut those apart to kind of give them like a blooming appearance. I also added in some stones to this planter so the planter doesn't go flying off of my patio or so it doesn't tip over or whatnot. It's good just to do that. Um, and then I'm just using some Dollar Tree moss and popping that in to cover up my little... Um, <laughs> piece of foam in there and then voila there we have a fabulous garden planter and it looks kind of Moroccan and chic 
on a budget, you guys, I think it's a fun idea. And I also think it would be really nice to find a really beautiful stencil and try my hand at stenciling like some blue kind of Moroccan looking tile. Um, but this is very high end, kind of Pottery Barn inspired or, you know, just a little bit glam chic, like something you would find at Home Goods, but it's from Dollar Tree on a budget. <laughs> Now this next Dollar Tree DIY is so easy and it's so fun and I feel like really budget friendly as well. So you're just going to take some of the Dollar Tree canvases and they have this really amazing geometric canvas art that they have just put out. So you guys look in your picture section, which is also along with like your candles and candlesticks and all of that. But what I wanted to do with my canvas art, which it's beautiful to hang as is, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to frame mine. I wanted to look um, like it was a framed piece of art that I can just kind of set around my house and some little vignettes and whatnot. You could also hang this on the wall in kind of a little bit of a collage. So I'm just taking and using a crafting tool and some scissors. I'm cutting the canvas out and then with this five by seven picture frame, the little insert, I'm using that as my guide and then just cutting it out. And I will tell you, I did finally order some craft scissors. So hopefully my rusty dull scissors will be remedied here. They're not exactly rusty, but they are so dull. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm just going to pop the glass back in and then add my beautiful framed art. And I really think that this came out so fantastic. I think Dollar Tree, I love these frames. They're so classy and elegant. They're almost like a dark black wood insert of the frame and they have this gold around it. And I know Hobby Lobby sells this almost identical frame. It's not even as nice as this for way more than a dollar. So again, here is another idea for some frames canvas art. I also found this cute little like shabby chic, a bundle of flowers and lamb and little donkey or horse. And so I decided to use the lamb and also um, the little rose floral picture. And again, these pictures are beautiful, you guys, as is, but I'm trying to create like a little, um, vignette of pictures and I'm not totally for sure where I want to put this yet in my house. I might either separate them or keep them together and just like make a little um, collage framed art wall type thing is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, here's how it looks after it's framed. I feel like it looks really high end and chic. I was going to paint um, this frame, the ones with kind of the more shabby chic um, looking pictures, but then I decided against it. I really decided that I loved how they popped against that darker frame color. And I have been mixing in a little bit of black um, recently into some of my pastel decor. And I really feel like I love how it looks. It just looks a little bit more glam chic and a little bit more high end because it gives things a bit of dimension instead of it being so overly feminine. You have that nice, um, you know, just contrast, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now I did hate cutting down this little rose picture though, because I did feel like it didn't quite fit in here. It probably needed a little bit different size frame, but I wanted it to be a collection and to all go together. So here is how it turned out. Now I displayed it on my little outdoor patio table just to give you guys an idea of where you might want to put this. I still need to redo some little vignettes in my house to make space for these or find a wall that I want to put them on. But I think they're so fabulous. Look for some of these beautiful new framed or these canvas prints and then also some frames or you could just use as is. Happy crafting. excited to share this DIY with you. Now we're going to take one of those little kids watering cans. It's the plastic. It's from the kids section, either in toys or in your like pool toy section of Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take some of this smoky beige spray paint. I love this color. I think it's so pretty. And I'm just going to give it a nice good coat. Now I did run out of my smoky beige. And so I had to use another coat on here and it ended up just being white. And that's what I had in my stash, which that's totally fine as well. Um, but I'll tell you, I think smoky beige is now my new favorite color and the smoky beige is available in the rust-oleum brand spray paint the 2x rust-oleum brand now i'm taking my little painted dollar tree watering can again a kid's toy i think it comes out so fabulous and i'm just adding in these pretty little roses now these roses did come from hobby lobby i don't know how long ago because i picked them up from a neighbor's garage sale like 
three years ago probably and the tags even then looked old but Hobby Lobby does have beautiful like realistic roses so does Michaels and even Dollar Tree has beautiful roses you know just depending on what color you want and what budget you want to use on those and check out this beautiful tablecloth that I found at the thrift store this weekend it was two dollars it's so pretty and summery I was so excited to find it I knew I wanted it for my DIY for this video but anyway I just used some hydrangeas and some pretty little roses and I'm popping it into this spring summer tablescape and it's just like this little peekaboo of a watering can. It's very subtle, it's very elegant. I could even like rim it with gold to match these dishes and my husband found these dishes at an auction and they were like $8 for the entire set so I'm stoked to find those as well. pots that I grabbed from Dollar Tree and again I used that smoky beige and just spray painted them and I have real soil in them and I've already successfully killed a couple of plants this season so I'm gonna go ahead and pop some faux flowers into here and I have no shame in my faux gardening games so comment down below if you guys are there with me but I'm using these tulips I found these super cheap at Walmart they were like three bucks for the bundle they're not the most high-end but they're gonna be on the back patio so I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal and I just wanted something pretty I did bend the stems down and that helped them you know go into the pot a little bit better this is one of the larger dollar tree gardening pots and then i just added them to these pretty little scrolly um, hobby lobby stands and there you have some successful tulips on a budget and i cannot kill these which honestly in the long run with some of the plants that i'm not that great with i think might be a better idea so i do like to supplement real flowers with fake flowers so i'll have like some really beautiful real hanging baskets and then I'll have like some planters that just have faux flowers in them and you can even change them out if they're inexpensive faux flowers like after the summer sun fades them out change them out and once fall gets here you can put some fall leaves in once Christmas gets there you can put some Christmas greenery here's how it's coming together all with my little faux garden planter and a faux Moroccan tile um, a planter and all of these plants right here I think look beautiful and they're gonna stay alive which is what I love more than anything <laughs> fun and quick easy Dollar Tree DIY little cake stand or pedestal idea. I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree candlesticks and I'm just going to glue them together end to end with a dab of E6000 glue and then I'm going to take this Dollar Tree mirror and I'm going to clip the like little mirror part off of there and that way I can just hot glue the mirror to the top of the candlestick and I'm using hot glue on this part because if I want to change change it out all I have to do is pull the mirror off and put a plate on there or something like that and again remove that little spot where the mirror is going to supposed to be hanging on the wall because it kind of makes it where it pops out and you want your uh, 
mirror to set flat on top of your little pedestal or your little candlestick. Okay, so these are candlesticks from Dollar Tree. And here we have some fabulous little cake stands, pedestals. You guys know I love these. I love decorating with them. I think they're so versatile. Okay, so here's how they look. They look pretty cute like this. But again, I'm going in with my smoky beige. And excuse my mess over there. <laughs> Just some little DIY ideas going on. But I'm going to use the smoky beige. And again, this is Rust-Oleum paint brand. And this isn't sponsored at all, but I just love their paint brand as well as the smoky beige color. I just think that it's like so nice and it's not quite as bright as white. I feel like it's something that you would see like on Pottery Barn. Um, anyway, I think these are amazing how they transformed. I almost did them black or gold. And really you guys could use any color you love, like whatever decorating color that you're using, go for that. So you guys know I love to pop in a secret question on my videos, and let's introduce ourselves and get to know each other. Um, I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home. So you guys comment down below your name, and if you want to leave the state that you live in, that would be fine too. So just say hey in the comments. I love to get to know everybody. Um, and I also have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook group page if you want to connect even more. There's a lot of fun DIY crafty people over there. It's totally free, and we have a lot of fun just in general on my Facebook. Facebook page. I post several DIY videos a day over there. So to enter my giveaway, all you guys have to do is comment down below, say hello, um, leave your name if you're comfortable doing that, or you can leave the state that you live in. Um, and so I live in Southern Missouri, a fun time is there, and it's really a beautiful area. I have lived here for the majority of my life and I love it here. We have all four seasons and it's just a really beautiful place to live. And I'm really proud that it's my home and I feel like it's just a happy place to be as well. Um, so thank you guys for being here and I will say it's nice to get to know you. I hope that I can learn more about you guys and that you guys connect even more with me. And that will give you an entry into my giveaway and also you have to follow my Facebook page. So those will be the two things you need to do is answer the secret question and um, follow my Facebook page. Now here's Benji Bear. He is causing a commotion. I could not figure out why he was barking and barking and barking. He's wanting me to play with him with this little toy, this little chew bone toy or hand it to him. It was like sitting next to his toy box, which is just like a little Dollar Tree bin, but he's scared of the toy box for some reason I figured out. So anyway, he's always causing a commotion, but say hi to Benji Bear as well. I love y'all. First Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create an amazing candle lantern on a total budget. So from the Dollar Tree, grab these little wooden boxes. You could also use one of their gift box lids as well. I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree wooden dowels and I'm going to hot glue them on the bottom of the dowel and then on the corner and then just tuck them into the corner of the little wooden box. And that's going to get my dowels nice and secure in here. And I will tell you that I am using a high heat temperature glue gun. I'll leave my favorite glue gun linked in my Amazon description box for you guys in case you need a great glue gun. Now I'm just taking and I'm adding hot glue to the base of all four of the rest of my little dowels. It gets a little messy here, but then I'm just going to pop it in to the next box and bam, we have a fabulous lantern. And I do end up removing the little um, uh, hardware on the outside of the box. Now I'm also gonna share with you guys how you can make a smaller one of these. So I see these type of lanterns on a Pottery Barn, Kirkland's, so many different places. They're so expensive. These are actually wooden, although the boxes from Dollar Tree may be more of like a particle board type wood. But the other idea for you guys too is you can use the little Dollar Tree signs. Those work as well. Now I'm just removing the hardware and a quick little sand diddly do and bam, I don't have to worry about those. You could even fill them if you wanted to, but I didn't feel like it was necessary. Now I'm going in with my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just taking an old bar towel and I'm gonna rub that wax on there and you could sand it and rub it, you know, and just really get creative with it. I just added one layer, no sanding required truly. I felt like it came out really nice. So here is how they look, you guys. I popped a flickering flameless candle inside. You don't want to use a real candle at all. 
inside of these. There would be nowhere for the flame really to go, but check it out. Oh, and the Flickering Flameless Candles, it's $13, I believe, for a three pack on Amazon. And I'll link those in my Amazon store as well for you guys. But hey, listen, you could layer some greenery into these lanterns. You could add more candles. These are going to go definitely as a tabletop centerpiece. And I may add some stones around the candles and pop them outside on my little patio. Oh my goodness, I'm really, really excited for this project. I feel like they came out really high end on a total budget, literally about three bucks and you're staying and you have some really beautiful lanterns. The next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you all how to get creative and jazz up your Dollar Tree lemon plates. So if you're like me, you've been using these lemon plates for several years now, or maybe you haven't found them yet, but pick up an extra one. You have to try this craft. So you're going to take a piece of painter's tape and a marker. And now remember this. You can use any color you want to to make these checks, but I'm going to make some Mackenzie Childs inspired checks on my plate. Okay, this is so fun and honestly super therapeutic. Like if you need a fun little craft to do that you can just relax with, this is a really great one. Now that first marker I used was a blue marker that was not a permanent marker. I will suggest for you to use a permanent marker and try to match it to the color of your checks, but I end up using enough paint that's gonna go over um, where I drew my guideline, so it's not a big deal. But I'm gonna go ahead and take my paintbrush, and another little tip is to try to find a paintbrush that's squared off if you're gonna be painting square checks. You could even find one that's big enough to just paint that one individual check. Also, there are different sizes of painter's tape. So you can make a smaller check or a larger check. And don't worry if you don't have painter's tape, you can easily cut a piece of construction paper in a linear line and just use that as well as your marker. Maybe you're even a great freehander and you don't even need to mark it out. But I'm taking some blue crafter's paint and this is just regular blue crafting paint and I'm going to use that to make my checks. I used a mix of some Arteza, kind of a royal blue, and then also um, it was called electric blue from the Apple Barrel Craft Paint at Walmart. Now I will tell you that the McKenzie Child's royal blue checks are a little bit more royal blue. I wanted to go a little bit lighter on this one. I just thought it was so pretty. And I've actually seen some folks do a similar plate like this in my Olivia's Romantic Home group page. So thank you guys so much for all of the inspiration. Tag me down below or on Instagram if you've made this or if you recreate this. I'd love to see what you're up to. Now I'm taking this Deco Art paint pen and I'm just going to rim the edge of the plate with the paint pen. So if you see Mackenzie Childs, they sell really expensive, um, you know, plates and they actually use a, a gold paint that has like flecks of real gold in it. I think that might be why part of why they're so expensive. We don't have real gold in these, but you can get these paint pens at your local craft store. And I also just buy mine on Amazon. They're a little bit pricey, but they're worth it. I think they're like five or six bucks a pen. But let me tell you, they really give that stunning gold effect. And I also um, outlined the checks of my plate. Usually I don't always do that on my Mackenzie Child's dupes, but I thought for this one to kind of clean things up a little bit, it was a little bit tricky to get around those lemons. But there you guys have it, a fun and fabulous lemon decor plate on a total budget. And as you can, can see, I'm still using my other lemon plates to actually eat off of. You don't want to use a painted plate ever. Don't eat off of a painted plate unless you go through the steps of actually firing it and making it food safe. And you guys can Google how to do that, but fun and fabulous on a total budget. Now for this next DIY, I want to share with y'all how to take a terracotta pot and age it and make it look a little bit more vintage and distressed. So I found this terracotta pot at the thrift store over the weekend, and I'm just going to take some white paint. And this is honestly some paint that we had left over from when we painted the walls inside of our house during the shutdown last year. But I'm just going to take this little Dollar Tree sponge brush and gently 
rub some of the paint onto my clay pot. Then I'm taking a wet and also a dry piece of uh, paper towel and I'm going over it with a little bit of the wet paper towel to kind of smudge it off and then I'm going to go back over and kind of dry it. And if you feel like you've taken too much of your paint off, you can go back in with your paintbrush again like I'm doing and then just use your dry towel and it's going to give it that aged look. Okay, stick with me here with you guys. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and add a little bit more paint and distress it as you go along. You can also use chalk paint. This would work really great with chalk paint. Um, and you can leave your clay pot as is. I just thought it would look really neat to make it look like it's got that vintage garden appeal. And I've been wanting to try this DIY forever. Now I'm going to take a little bit of green paint and I mixed it in with some brown paint to kind of give it that aged moss look. I'm adding the paint on and then taking the wet paper towel and just kind of smudging some of it off and then taking the dry paper towel and just kind of blending it that way. You can see I go in with a little bit more white. So just do layers until you get your desired effect. Now don't forget your little round at the base. If you're going to be using this outside, I do suggest that you seal it um, because you've added this paint if it's gonna get wet. I'm going to put this in the centerpiece actually of my outdoor patio table and my patio table is covered. So I'm not super worried about it, but I could go back in with some sealer or some waterproof Mod Podge and just seal it. Now I'm gonna go one step further and add a quick little Dollar Tree arrangement to the center of my cool little thrift store pot by popping some foam into the center and then adding in some Dollar Tree greenery. Dollar Tree has some really beautiful, amazing greenery. That first piece of greenery though actually was from Walmart. Now these little greenery kind of eucalyptus-y, spiny looking things are from Dollar Tree and I'm just layering them in and around the larger one that's in the center. I'm adding in some Dollar Tree moss and some stones just to make sure everything kind of stays down in there really nicely. And then some of these little Dollar Tree ferns are really nice, you guys. Oh, their greenery is just so beautiful this season. So you guys can get creative. You could put lavender in this pot. You could put roses, whatever suits your fancy. And if you don't have a terracotta pot, you definitely want to go check out my last couple of videos. I've shared with you guys how to create faux terracotta pots. Imagine my delight and surprise when Mr. Romantic and I were out at thrift storing this weekend. And he was like, babe, there's a terracotta pot for you. So I picked up this beauty and I was really excited to kind of make it look a little bit more aged an English garden appeal. So fun, totally fabulous on a total budget. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to create this little box garden planter. So from the Dollar Tree, I took a several of their little wooden boxes. Now if you don't have these little wooden boxes, no worries. Dollar Tree always carries those little wooden signs. Look in their sign section, grab a couple of those, whatever suits your fancy and whatever you're able to get a hold of. So I'm just going to take and glue these little wooden boxes together from end to end. Another idea for this is if you can find the little wooden crates that they're putting out in their crafters square section, those would work as well. And again, I'm just hot gluing the other set of boxes end to end. So I do have a high heat glue gun that works fairly well. You could also use wood glue, but I'm super impatient and this seems to hold up just fine. Now I'm going to flip one set of boxes over and then add the next set of boxes to the top. So I want it to look like it's kind of like that old like little postmaster um, box type thing and um, just make it look kind of cute and so I'm going to hot glue the first one to the other one and you could go with it like this or you could go one step further and what I did was I added some dowels to create a height and layered effect. I feel like a lot of my planters are sitting low to the ground so I wanted something that could kind of pop back into the backdrop or that I could put into the centerpiece of my table and have some height. That way the guests aren't always blocked by greenery. So I'm just adding in some of these wooden dowels. Again, these are also from Dollar Tree in their Crafters Square section. 
you're going to want to hot glue the bottom of the dowel and then into the corner and that's going to create the legs you could also double the these up just to give it a little bit more sturdy. I did notice it was maybe even just a little bit top heavy, so I don't suggest that you use this outside. It would definitely topple over in my outside with the amount of wind that we get here. Now, of course, I wanted to make a little floral arrangement, so I am just taking some hot glue and I cut these little pieces of Dollar Tree foam down so I had something for my greenery to pop into and I'm popping some greenery into this. Now, I was even thinking about staining this, so let me know if you guys think I should stain this to match my other little like wooden lantern pieces. I kind of liked it not stained, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think it also might be even cute painted black like to remove all the hardware and then you know even paint the hardware gold and put it back on but I feel like this year for summer I really just been trying to do easy crafts so this one is definitely a little bit of a lazy girl craft just leaving it as is I also pop some succulents into it and I feel like it kind of contrasts nicely against the other um, stained lanterns but it also might look really good I just I'm not for sure but here it is on my little table centerpiece and again I was able to place things underneath it because of the height and level that it's sitting at which I think is kind of a cool idea especially if you like to do um, a layered effect like I do I like to layer a lot of colors and patterns and textures together just to give your eye something really to look at it and this just screams summer to me bright beautiful florals those were my mother's day roses that are in those vases on either side and a couple of the roses are even from my garden i am so excited to have flowers blooming from my garden oh my goodness in this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to create a lovely Mackenzie Childs inspired um, Dollar Tree little star. So we're going to start out with this wooden star cut out and then taking some painter's tape. I'm going to run the painter's tape in diagonal lines and then just using a Sharpie. Um, Sharpie out lines. I do want to paint some of those Mackenzie Child's amazing royal check stripes on my star and I'm going to cheat and use this little template that way I can hopefully paint my checks a little bit steadier. Now let me tell you guys this. I was so nervous when I first started painting checks and it is not as hard as you think. You do not have to be any type of real artist to do this at all. I promise you grab your paintbrush and some paint and start painting in those little lines and listen if you all look closely at mine it's very wobbly there's paint smudges here and there I do like to mix um, two different colors of paint sometimes so I've got a darker blue and a lighter blue just to give it a little bit dimension if you look at the McKenzie Childs checks they're not perfect by any means it really looks like they're hand painted so I want to encourage you guys to try this project give yourself some grace and if you're nervous that you're going to ruin this it's a one dollar wooden you know star so it's not the end of the world if it comes out terrible you can flip it over and do something different on the other side sometimes i've even just you know painted over the entire thing so you guys can do this anyway i'm going in and painting my checks up now, for I noticed for these wooden cutouts, I only had to do one coat. For my lemon plate that I painted, I did have to do two coats. The other thing I forgot to do was I forgot to paint my base white. So I did notice it looked kind of like yellowy. So I'm going back in with just some white paint and I'm gonna clean that up and just kind of make it look a little bit more painted, I guess. Now, I do will tell you though that with Mackenzie Child's checks, they do use kind of a cream colored off-white paint. I just had bright white, but I think it still came out really super adorable. Now, you can go an extra step like I did and add a little bit of gold paint around the edge. I'm using this Deco Premium Paint Pen. It's a Deco, Deco Art Premium Paint Pen. I find mine on Amazon. I love these. So you just have to push a little bit on that paint pen and the paint will drop down into it. And it gives you a really nice steady line. I only rimmed the edge of my star. You could go back in and outline the checks too, but I felt like my checks were <laughs> looking pretty good today or okay enough. 
and I thought that this was a really fun just little addition to the table it gives you a kind of surprise a really nice pop of color now you can see over to the back these are the Mackenzie Child royal blue check napkins so their royal blue check is a lot more royal blue than mine came out but I still thought it was a fun pop of color Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all a super easy DIY. You can take one of those little Dollar Tree wooden boxes. I'm going to remove the hardware from the front of the box. I want to make a really cute little easy plant stand. If you don't have one of these, do not fear. You're going to probably see these kind of like little boxes in sign forms at Dollar Tree. Grab one of those. The other thing I've used to create this before is to use a box lid. So use like one of their gift box lids, paint it, just have fun with it. Now, I am going to take my Waverly Antique Wax, and the, Aver the Waverly Antique Wax does really great with these. And it's like a particle board. It's not real wood. And so their signs are particle bo board as well. So what I would do if I were you guys and you were just using a sign for this, chalk paint it and then stain over it. Or if you have one of these boxes, you can just stain directly on top of it, or you can paint it whatever color you love. I want to make it look kind of like a high-end little pottery barn inspired like little plant stand kind of that modern chic look that everybody is using um, I think that this is nice to mix in with your romantic decor so I love to juxtapose you know different um, textures and styles into my decor that way it doesn't just all look like one style I want it to look a little bit romantic a little bit modern a little bit farmhousey a little bit French country and you're just gonna have so much more interest that way and you're gonna get to play with so many more colors and styles and I you guys have to know by now I love to play with different colors and styles so once I had this all the way stained I did take a bit of sandpaper and run it around the edges and then I called it a day. Hey, not a bad craft at all. This one was super easy. The next thing I did was I just went ahead and with my hot glue gun, I hot glued a massive amount of hot glue around the edge of the little candlestick. So right here, just take a lot of hot glue. You don't even have to be super neat about it because it's gonna be underneath here. You do want to turn your thing upside down so you can get it into the center. And then there you have that. Now, I wanna show you guys one more quick little idea for what you can add to this craft just to make it look really cute. Succulents are all the rage, so grab some of those little Dollar Tree um, clay pots, add in some foam and some moss and a succulent, and check this out. Okay, this would definitely be even five bucks at Target. So it was not that much using Dollar Tree supplies. I think we spent maybe four or five bucks total for the stand and all the little things. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna share with you how to create a beautiful Dollar Tree cross wreath. So I'm starting out with this Dollar Tree cross wreath form, and then I'm just using some burlap fabric and I hot glued the burlap fabric to the end of the wreath, tucked it under and then begin to wind it in and around the base till I got to this arm and then I hot glued it at the end, trimmed it off and then I did use a zip tie to reinforce the edges of my little wreath form just to make sure that the fabric did not pop off. This is going to be going outside and so I didn't want anything um, popping off. We do get a lot of high winds and so Anyway, and then once I had that all finished, I went in with a little bit of trim. Dollar Tree's carrying this really, really nice trim, and it's great for just adding detail work to your projects. Then I decided to give it a little bit of vining greenery up the base of the cross. So I'm using this beautiful greenery that I found on Amazon. Dollar Tree also sells some viney, viney greenery as well. Because the cross is smaller, I wanted to use a smaller detail with this. Um, and then I'm taking these two beautiful roses stems. Now I did pick these up at Michael's on clearance at the end of the Christmas season, believe it or not. Um, and this cross is going to honor my mother-in-law and she did love some beautiful Victorian colors and flowers. And so I thought these would be really sweet for spring. And I'm taking some zip ties and zip tying the center point of the rose 
roses, again, to really make sure that they will hold on. And then using this beautiful bow, I made it with my Easy Bow Maker. I'm going to add that to the center, again, with some zip ties. And I'm just going to cut a triangle in an upwards direction to finish off my tails. I trimmed off any loose pieces of burlap and fabric and then gave my bow a nice fluffing and here is how it turned out. I was really, really excited about this. I think that these crosses were put out after Easter at my Dollar Tree store. Um, but hopefully you guys should be able to find them still and I just think this will be so beautiful and such a wonderful way to honor her and these make also really beautiful decor pieces. I'm going to make one for my front yard bike in different colors to match my um, Memorial Day and 4th of July colors and I'm going to share with you guys that in this video later but so fun and beautiful on a budget. Now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you how to make a really nice little rolling planter. So from the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna take one of these storage basket containers and I'm going to clip the ends off. And then Dollar Tree is also carrying these little rolling planter bases. And I'm just going to take a crafting tool and poke two little holes in the base of this. And then two little holes in the base of my plastic storage bucket. And then I'm gonna take a zip tie and attach them together. I only ended up needing one of these but you could use two if you needed it to be really reinforced but basically I just want to create a rolling planter so having a planter on wheels makes it really nice if you have a heavier plant or you just have storms in your area and you need to kind of scoot your plants out of the way I did decide to use this really pretty I believe it's a garnet colored spray paint I just actually had it in my stash left over from one of the kids projects like a year or two ago so I'm gonna go ahead and and painted this nice pretty pop of red and that way I'll have a little bit of color on my little patio space and it did take quite a bit of spray paint so be sure and be ready with quite a bit I originally was going to paint it the same color I painted my little um, cookie pan flower but I didn't end up having enough spray paint and I wanted to make sure that it was covered really nicely you could also spray paint everything before you attach it together and then I just popped this faux little box with kind of round floral into the center of it and voila I have a fabulous cute kind of little baskety decorative rolling floral plant planter using items from the Dollar Tree if you guys have priced planters online you will know they are so expensive and of course Benji Bear had to be involved in this one as well This next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to make a Dollar Tree cookie pan flower. So taking this cookie pan, I'm drawing flower petals from the edge of the cookie pan into the center. You can also find a free floral um, petal template if you just go to your Google search bar and Google free floral petal template and you could print that out and then use that to trace your cookie pan flowers. But you guys can just easily cut it also by drawing from the center in from the end into into the center and then using these fairly sharp scissors I am cutting out my different little pieces of cookie pan now I will tell you that the cookie pan is a bit sharp um, when you're cutting these out so be careful if you're concerned about possibly nicking your hand or your fingers it might be a good idea to put on some kitchen gloves or some little Dollar Tree garden gloves um, that will protect your hands or just be extra careful like I was I did okay with this but I did notice a couple times that it did seem sharp around the edges so I used about four cookie pans and at the Dollar Tree when you buy their cookie pans they are two for a dollar so you get quite a bit of bang for your buck on that one and again I'm just continuing to cut out my little cookie pan flower petals until I get the desired amount that I can make a really nice little full flower now I'm taking this ribbon roll and it's a large ribbon roll you could also use a soup bowl or a cereal bowl and I just cut a round center for the center of my flower and now I'm just going to take some hot glue and I'm going to hot glue my flower petals on individually layering them as I go 
I did one of these cookie pan flowers a couple of years ago, and it was inspired by my sweet friend Barb um, at the Shabby Chic. Um, I'm sorry, at the Shabby Tree. And so go check her out. I absolutely adore Barb. And um, I did on my last one, I painted it white with some chalk paint. But for this one, I decided to give it a little bit more of a glamorous look. And so I am going to be using a really pretty copper spray paint. And for the center part here, I'm using some smaller flowers petals that I cut with the rest of the cookie sheet that was not used in my larger petals. And then here's how that looks. And again, these are fun to chalk paint. You can put them on your wall for decor. You can use them in your garden underneath a covered porch is where mine's gonna go. But I'm just taking this copper spray paint. You can find it at Walmart and it's so pretty and elegant. And I'm also spray painting to match one of the Dollar Tree taller, smaller flowers. I've used these for so many different crafts. So I'm adding some hot glue to the center of the entire thing, gluing that all together, and then adding this beautiful glam jewel. I get all of my glam jewels at totallydezzle.com. Natalie is a small business. I'm going to leave her link in the description box for you guys. And here it is popped into my covered porch space where my little pansies are. Now this is covered. It doesn't get a lot of direct sunlight, so I think it will be okay having used the hot glue. However, if you're concerned about that, you may want to just use this more as an indoor option or find some more heat resistant glue, I suppose. But how adorable, fun, and fabulous on a total budget you guys have fun with this and Benji Bear of course was the creative director on this one for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I have to share with you all how to create this super amazing little craft storage basket. So from the Dollar Tree, you're going to grab two of their paper towel holders and two of these little metal baskets. And then using zip ties, you want to zip tie one end and then zip tie the other end and do it kind of loosely to make sure you get your basket lined up correctly. And then you can trim off those zip ties and then you can go back in and zip tie it again on either side just to really make sure it's nice and reinforced. Now you guys can see that I created a black one off to the side over here and I actually use it every single day in my crafting studio. And these are amazing, you guys. They're super sturdy and they work really, really well. And I'm not just saying that, they really, really, truly do. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna add even an extra step I'm going to share with you guys it's going to be so awesome but anyway now you're going to take some zip ties and you're going to zip tie the top part of the basket and again you do want to use two zip ties on each side to really reinforce it but zip tie one side then zip tie the other side then go back in and do your double zip tying to reinforce it because you don't want your basket to you know be um like wonky so you don't want to do two sides at once just one side and then the other side and then now I'm going to take these little Dollar Tree napkin holders and I'm going to zip tie those to the sides okay because I have been using this in my crafting studio I needed something that I could put glue sticks I ordered these extra large glue sticks from Amazon and then also paintbrushes in Anyway, you're gonna take and zip tie the napkin holder to each side. Another idea for this is to use this in your kitchen for storage for fruit, veggies, napkins to the side. I've used this also outside. Um, you can also use this in your makeup area. You can put palettes on one side and then like nail polishes and lipsticks in the center. But here's how I'm using this particular one in my crafting studio. I'm gonna put glue sticks on one side, the paint brushes, and then all my tools and kind of markers and whatnot. And oh my goodness, like seriously, this is so sturdy and amazing. And you can put some little Dollar Tree clips to the top and then just put your paints down. Make sure you put your paints upside down. That way they'll drain to the top. And also <laughs> make sure those paints that the lids are on there really nice and securely. But this is so amazingly fabulous and storage is so expensive. And I will tell you guys to move this around. You just grab it here by the handle and it, you can take it anywhere. And I really do use it every day and I take it inside outside and everything pretty much stays on here really really nicely and it just all stays together especially if you're a messy crafter like me 
For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna create a beautiful cross wreath and I'm just gonna take this Dollar Tree cross wreath and then wrap it in this ribbon. And this is just some burlap colored ribbon. And this was a lot easier to use than the larger burlap that I used on the last cross wreath that I made. But again, I'm just hot gluing the ends and then wrapping it and then hot gluing the ends as I go. If this is going to be outside, you could even reinforce it with some zip ties on the ends, but this one seemed to work pretty good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some of this lamb's ear garland and I just trimmed off a couple of pieces. Any greenery honestly will do. I just happen to have quite a bit of this in my crafting stash and I'm really trying to use everything that I have on hand before I go buy new supplies. So I'm zip tying the greenery to the center and now using my easy bow maker, I'm just gonna make a really easy bow. I have this red plaid ribbon that I found on Amazon last season. I had so much of it that I had some left over. So I'm gonna use that as the base of this bow. I'm going to trim off the ends of the ribbon by putting a little bit of a triangle in an upwards direction. That's gonna give it a really nice boutique finish. And then using this blue and white check ribbon, again, an Amazon find, um, I'm just going to add that as the next layer. So I want this to be a Memorial Day honoring wreath. Now this red and white striped ribbon is actually left over from Christmas, you guys. So dig into your ribbon stash, you really might be surprised on what you have. And so just layering these pretty patterns and colors is really going to bring this to life, in my opinion. So it's gonna go for Memorial Day and then 4th of July. I do have a really pretty little festive um, floral that I put on my front porch that I made using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. And so all of my videos are going to be on my YouTube channel and I'm also posting a lot of them on my Facebook. You guys can go back and check them out if you want to see how I created that floral for my front porch. Now I'm using a zip tie to zip tie this bow together. And then I'm just going to zip tie the entire thing to the cross. And that way everything is gonna be reinforced with these zip ties and it's gonna go up against my little bike. So you shouldn't see the back, but I did glue some um, little pieces of greenery over the back just in case. I'm kind of like that detail person. Now you can also take another piece of ribbon and tie that over the zip ties. Give your bow a nice, good fluffing. That's the secret to my bows. And then I just used some of these Valentine's Day red roses and I popped a couple of those in the top. And then see that using this beautiful pre-tied bow, also from the Dollar Tree, um, I just added that to the center of my little cross wreath. And I think these would be so beautiful and so honoring. Um, and I'll be proud to display this on my little front bike. The next thing I'm doing is I'm taking this pretty glam jewel, again, from totallydazzle.com. Natalie is a small business and I love supporting small businesses. I'll leave her link in the description box below for you guys. Here's how it came out. I'm sharing with you guys how it looks just kind of on my back porch here next to this pretty planter that we, recre that we created. It really pops nicely against the yellow. And then I'll also share with you guys um, where I put it in my front yard as well. So as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite video in this session and which one we'll be recreating. And also the secret question for this video is what is your favorite summertime perennial flower? So I'd love to hear what you guys are planting in your gardens. Right now I have some really beautiful irises that have come back that are blooming. So I hope you guys now for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree birdhouses and these are gonna be in the crafter's square section at your local Dollar Tree and they come with just a raw wood. And a couple of days ago, I painted this white. Um, so I just chalk painted it white. I believe it was one color, one, one coat. Um, and so now I'm just gonna take some of this little apple barrel craft paint. I got this at Walmart and I'm just gonna add a green roof. And I apologize if you guys can hear Benji Bear in the backyard barking. He, his girlfriend, Shushilu, is back there and so he is really causing quite a commotion. Um, but anyway, I'm just gonna paint the little top part of my birdhouse green. Now you guys can do any color you want. I think it would even be really cute to make a Mackenzie Childs inspired birdhouse um, with like some maybe some little checks or stripes or just something like that. I thought that would be really cute. And so again, I'm just adding some little green tips also to the base of this, but really get creative. 
let me tell you, I think that this would be such a fun and amazing little craft to do with your kiddos or your grandkids. And um, just get creative, you guys. Uh, pour some paint and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, the next idea I had was to take this piece of scrap wood and then just paint it green and then add that to the base so it kind of looks like it's standing up, you know, like on a little stand, like a little birdhouse would look. And my idea is to even add like a little plate around it and add in some fun little moss and some eggs and some goodies like that. So here's my little plastic plate I hot glued my birdhouse onto and then I'm adding in just some little leaves here and then I decided to add in some of this decorative moss in and around the base to kind of make it feel I guess like it's like a little fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods might as well <laughs> don't we all need a good fairy garden birdhouse out in the woods in fact that would be kind of something fun to have like an oversized birdhouse um maybe i'll do something like that this year and so now i'm just going to add some little eggs in and around the base of my little fairy garden birdhouse and there it is nestled with my sweet little bunny and there's benji bear scooting around in the background he is such a little stinker you guys every time i get into crafting and decorating he always has to be right next to me but he wants to say hi to you guys and then there's that sweet little bunny that sweet little bunny came from Tuesday morning I love how she has her beautiful little crown on so fun and fabulous on a budget This next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree family sign and I'm just going to chalk paint it white. I love this sign. My sweet friend Stacy sent me this one and then a gather sign, which I'm probably going to save until next season, until the fall time. Um, but I'm just going to take some white chalk paint and I'm going to chalk paint the family part, the little lettering on the front, and then also in and around the sides. You know, family is such my heart. And I do think it was really cute as is. But I'm going to be doing kind of more of like a French country, like really washed out look with my home decor for some of my Easter goodies. I like to do like a lot of pastels and whatnot, but you guys can always paint this to suit your home decor. But here's how it turned out. I think it's so cute. Um, I think it's perfect for Easter. It goes perfectly with my Easter decor right here. So as always, you guys, I ask that you um, comment down below and let me know what your favorite DIY is in this video and which one will you, be, will you be recreating. I know Benji Bear had a big hand in all of these DIYs today. He was the creative director, and I can tell you what, he was the best ever. So here he's got these little balls. He gets a bark box every month um, that um, I signed him up for. I just thought he would love that. So they send him um, toys for small animals. So here's his little toy box right here, and he was fussing at me. He really wanted me to get his toy box down. Um, I had moved it out of the way just kind of to make the video look more decor-y. He's looking for his ball. Look at him push all those toys out of the way to find his special yellow ball. So shout out to Benchy Bear and all the puppies who love him that watch my videos. We love y'all and we're so thankful and blessed to have you here. Thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. If you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home and I love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. And for everybody that has jumped on this journey with me, thank you all for being here. All of your kind comments are so felt. And remember, you always have a voice to bless one another and even bless me by dropping a kind comment down below, leaving some beautiful emojis and all of that fun stuff. I just hope that I can keep you guys encouraged to craft and decorate on a budget. And I feel like crafting and decorating is so good for your heart and soul. So I just wanna encourage you guys to keep up the good work, plug it in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint and all of that fun stuff. Now, listen, if you're brave enough to share photos of your home decor and DIY projects, I do have an Olivia's Romantic Home Facebook page. I share several DIY videos a day over there, as well as a free group page you guys can join and post photos of your home decor and DIY projects. And I see all of your posts and I don't always get to comment, but I just want to let you guys know that everything that you make and create and share with me is so amazing and is such a kind little group over there. So thank you for that. Now, don't forget to also follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I share kind of little um, snippets of different different DIY videos and you could always find all of my DIY videos on my YouTube channel um, to just stay crafting and decorating and all of that fun stuff. So I'm going to let you guys get back to your day. I 
love y'all to the moon and back. I cannot wait for our next projects. And until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And we'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.